was telling you. It was particularly busy. It was extremely busy. Uh, just from the time I got up at 8.15 this morning. I got up closer. You were up at 9.30? 9? 9. Yeah, 30. I think it was closer to 9, actually. Uh, but well, that yeah. was up early, Adam. Up yeah, Adam and Ray it's, uh, it's been non-stop. I mean, it's like... WrestleMania type shit today, dude. To I, be honest, I wouldn't back that up. I'm not gonna sign on that. But it was busy. in my world uh, with the amount of news that we have had yes. on the website. We have today, different functions is, in a way. It is WrestleMania type. Yeah, maybe it was. Know, I don't news know. numbers for me. It's just been on non-stop. And then, you know, of course, right before we come on the air here tonight, we get, we get the breaking news. Uh, TNA put up a, uh, a post on their website basically saying that they put up a poll and uh, the fans have basically demanded we want the six-sided ring to return to TNA. Right. Uh, TNA, ImpactWrestling.com, just about a half an hour ago put up a post saying, uh, what do you guys want to see? Do you want the four-sided ring? Do you want the six-sided ring? Uh, the results of the poll are going to be announced on Friday. Friday. And... Uh, with those results, all future TNA Impact tapings starting in New York City in late July or August. I think it's August, July or August. Um, from that point forward, uh, starting in New York City, the six-sided ring is probably more than likely going to return to TNA. Also, in New York City, they got the Hardy Boys reuniting. The Hardy Boys, uh, they announced so Matt to, Hardy yesterday. Trying right. to, try to sell some tickets. Spike TV executives are based out of uh, New York City, and I true? think they want to make a good impression knowing that officials from Spike TV are going to be in New York City. It was kind of the deal with Slimiversary uh, being in Texas. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got the Carter family and everything else trying to draw a big crowd so they brought in the Von Erichs and everybody else. That was uh, awesome, by the way. The Von Erichs? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they got a huge pop. I thought the, the Kevin Von Erich uh, running at the end, yeah. was like a, it yeah, felt yeah. like a moment. Right. The Team 3D Hall of Fame announcement felt like a moment. There was a couple of things on that same anniversary show, which we'll get into when we get into it. It was a good show. There was some cool shit on there. People shit. I liked it. People shit on TNA all the time. And listen, well, you, I wrote watch, in my review, you watch Impact. Yeah, I wrote in my column, eWrestlingNews.com, which works this week. Uh, the column I talk about, they, they can't put a TV show on to save their life. A weekly, episodic, uh, you know, series type show, you, they can't do it to save their life. But a okay. pay-per-view where you got eight matches that's going to go 10, 15 minutes... Mm. They got the, the kind of talent that can really deliver with that right. kind of a show if you line it up that way. Absolutely. You go to TV where you need backstage skits and personalities and character development, and the, they don't have it when it comes yeah. to that. But, but right. they could put on a hell of a pay-per-view, and I thought Slammiversary was excellent. Slammiversary was very, very good. Going into it, it looked worthless. Like, the main event yeah. is scratched. Yeah. There's nothing really that matters, kind of, sort of. And, yeah. and But when you turn, like I always say, when you turn the... The remote off, and you turn the show off at the end of the show. Right. What, do you feel? Do you feel like, yo, that was a good show? That was one of those. But when you turn it off, you're like, that was a pretty fucking good show. That was a good one, man. It was a good show. Anniversary was good. We're gonna uh, we're gonna run that down from top to bottom. Go through the high points, the low points. The Monday Night Raw last night. Raw, I didn't think was all that bad last night. I didn't think um, it was all that like, good. No, but or, it wasn't terrible. Or all that bad. It was yeah. it was like an average Mixed show. Mixed bag. Right, yeah. Right, there was right. a couple things that were you know not. I wouldn't even say cool, but like good enough. Right. And then there was. You know the usual shit, and then there was you know stuff that you could take or leave. But it was a, right. you know, it wasn't a yeah. terrible show or nothing. Do you know that I fell asleep for about twenty minutes during Raw last night towards the? Well, that's uh, not a good I think, I think it was hour. No, that doesn't help your argument. It that was, it was a hour good show. one, man. I, I worked. We were working uh, for Slammiversary on Sunday night, and then uh, I didn't get very much uh, sleep. Why? I, I was tired yesterday. Why? I didn't, so get, I didn't get enough Z's. It was Why? one of those naps where you don't fall asleep. You're kind of there. You've got your eyes closed. Yeah, you're like between worlds. You can kind of you can yeah. hear what's going on. You know what I mean? So, uh, but that was during Raw last night. So, uh, and then ah, uh, you know what else? Before Raw yesterday, I had to go to traffic court out in oh, Posting right. Hill. Yeah. You know, so I had to drive all the way out there. I didn't even hear how that went. Dude. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. I get to traffic court yesterday. All right. And it's I've had a in, couple it, beers. I'm a little bloated right now. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the town of Post and Kill, right? Post and Kill, New Whatever York. And this means. is yeah. this is a town of I don't know, like pigs. Eight hundred people. So it's like a redneck town. It's out in the boondocks, way out, right? I got Box. pulled over. I got pulled over in the town of Post and Kill. I think it was 
four years, five years ago. I mean, that's it, all I mean the we're BTC talking, we're going? talking like four or oh, five years that. ago, right? I thought this just happened. So I, I get pulled over. Yeah, I, I got it. It's got to be five years, man. Uh, maybe even longer, man. Uh, How are you not in way more trouble for not? Well, doing anyway, this? so so listen. So I find out. I go to DMV, right? And they see yeah, uh, you've got to. It was two thousand seven. So okay. what's that? Two thousand six. That's six seven years, years ago. Seven years ago. <laughs> seven years ago. How are you just now dealing so, with uh, this? So what? Well, I went to DMV. When did you go to DMV? Uh, a month or two ago. Oh, so this was recently, and then this, okay. About a month or two ago, yes. I went down to DMV because I had to get the title for the Tiburon yeah, yeah, for yeah. Dave. You're out of the Remember? car. Yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah. I did that. So I go down there, he's and... He's got multiple cars. Don't, don't let him pretend like he's the everyman. He's just, uh, I buy my milk and bread. He's got money. And I, I wanted to... Guy over here. I wanted to put another vehicle on the road. Well, they told me, you've got this ticket out back in, in Posting Kill from 2007, and your license is suspended, and you've got a warrant out for your arrest when's because the, it's a traffic ticket. When's the last time you renewed your license? Don't you have to renew it every you five You renew it every years? ten years, I think. Ten? Every ten. Okay, I thought it was yeah, five. Okay. Something like that. Well, yeah, I think my... Well, if you did, then uh, my well, how would that not come up then? If well, it happened in 2007, you're talking no, 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 about you haven't no, no, no. renewed your license in seven years? It's about, well, you don't have to, you renew it every uh, every ten years. I thought it was every five. Okay. No, 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 I think New York has, has these rules where it's every... You don't have it? What the hell's my license at? Here it is. Yeah. Um, it's when valid it? through 2017. It's valid through 2017. You got it in 2009. If you got it in 2009 and this happened in 2007, how does that Well, they wouldn't off? have suspended the license if you don't show up to court, okay? Mm -hmm. They don't suspend your license right away. But okay, this was your two license. Years later. It would have been. It would have been. No, they have about not got to you by then. Two years later. Well, All right, but anyways, me, what happened? They let me renew my license, and in they didn't bring it up. They, you would they remember didn't, that. It didn't come up then. Yeah, you would remember that. So you would think. Well, they wouldn't have renewed it. Yeah. I wasn't that a license. Exactly. There you go. Well, anyway, so All it didn't right. pop up then. So they wound up. They wound up renewing. So my what license happened like that? So, there, so I go to court yesterday, and uh, I go in there, and it's 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 a seatbelt ticket. Okay. It's not a That's speeding. It? It's not a speeding ticket. It's a seatbelt ticket. That's like not giving a book back to the library or something. Like, who gives yeah, a shit? It's a, well, a seatbelt ticket. And they had this on file from seven That's years ago. That's like swimming ago. without floaties. It's like, yo, I think I can do it. Right. I don't need the floaties. I can swim just fine. I don't need a seatbelt. I can drive good enough that I'm, you know. All right. Normally, normally you get pulled over for speeding or, or, or something like that. And then the cop walks up and he sees, oh, you don't have a seatbelt on. You, Oh, they uh, we get on. you for the speeding ticket yeah, 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 and the yeah. seatbelt and this, that, and the other thing. You didn't like my floaties analogy? With it was okay. Right. I know sold it, but yeah, okay. anyway. So, just came up with I get to this post and kill oh, town court yesterday, right? And yes. I keep in mind, I'm in a town of 500, 800 people. I mean, it can't be, yes. can't be much you more. Paint than the me. picture. I right. walk in, in this courtroom, okay, first of all, there were four other people. There were four other people. Normally, you go in the traffic court. And you got 50, if, if you're in the city, you might have 100, 200 people there. I walk in, and there are four people in this. And it's a... It's on a boat, no, I'm the courtroom is probably... The, 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 the entire courtroom yeah. is probably the size of... There is no significant... I'm just telling you how... Oh, right. okay. I didn't know if that was good or bad for four people. is such a... Eight. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for you? <laughs> if you listened, if you go to city court, there's 100, 200 yeah, people. Yeah, but is that bad or worse to have more people? I don't understand. Well, it's good because I'm in and out. Oh, okay. If there's okay. only four people, uh, I don't have to wait until my name's yeah, called. And then that makes sense. There. Right, but anyway, so I walk in there, and they've got a judge. Oh, there's a there's a whole judge in the, in the gown and everything else, yes. dude. So they have a gavel? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was the whole thing, you, you know. But the courtroom was it is black? the size of... Well, shut the fuck up. <laughs> the courtroom was the size of this room. I mean, it couldn't... It wasn't bigger than a school right. classroom. Four people in there. Did you so take I go that off? I... Uh, no, no, I really? didn't. At every courtroom that you walk in, I had figured I'm going to walk in, I'm going to keep you my hat take on. take it off before you even get in it's there. It's the respectful thing yeah. to do. But I figured I would walk like in. Well, nice there were like four people there. It's, it's in the right. middle of the You show respect so, to the judge. He's about to fucking make a ruling. So, on I walked in, so I walked in there and I sat there. And normally when you're in a regular courtroom, they say, hey, hat off, hat off. This yeah. isn't your normal regular courtroom. This, this is, is in, in the kill. middle of, this is in Post and Kill yeah. New York. 
Google it. Pull up Google Maps and, and Google this little town. Yeah, I, I know I've heard of it. There's East Post and, and Kill and Northport, right? I guess. I, but, uh, I don't know. The All right, Post so it's a Kill. little shit box town. Google the, uh, the the town of Post and Kill Town Court and you get the street view. And it's this little, yeah. little, little ass How court. crazy is that technology? So, uh, street view. I, think I know. It's got so, street so, view. I think it's so, so fucking I walk crazy in there and a guy that you can look at a neighborhood. Now, the judge called my name. I was the second one called and there were two people. Second two people out of four. All right. Uh, the guy before me got charged with uh, speeding and possession of marijuana, which is a huge deal Worse than a in Post and Kill yeah. New York. I mean, possession of marijuana, you're in Post and Kill New York. Did so he have a seatbelt on? Damn near a felony. That's a damn near a felony in Post and Kill New York. You, if, if, they, if you said they would add the seatbelt on if they could, so they added on the charge. Anyway, so he I had a seatbelt charge. So even with his weed and all his bullshit, right. he put his seatbelt on like a good boy. Whatever. So I wound up going before the judge. <laughs> when I walked up to the judge, I did yeah. take my hat off. Oh, you did? I was going before the judge. So, but I sat in the courtroom with the hat on. All right, all right. When my name was called, I it's went up and took, took my off. hat off okay. and stood before the judge. And uh, one thing leads to another, and i got to go back on uh, July 14th. July 14th to, oh. uh, to get my sentence. One yeah. thing led to another. All right, so probably, July 14th, that's five days dollar. after my birthday. Okay, who cares? Yeah, just pointing that out in case you guys want to send cash or cards. Hey, my birthday's on July 9th. Hey, well, listen, you we got a whole audience of people watching. They can send there. cards. They, you know, they can tape a $5 bill like old school grandmas and shit, you know. You know, I wouldn't even buy. I wouldn't even give you two dollars and a soda for Christ's sake. You've given people two dollars. I wouldn't and give sodas. you two dollars and both. a soda to thousands of people. That was the reference there. I know. Yeah, I know. Yes. But anyway, so I got to go back on uh, July fourteenth, the seventeenth. So with your sister, we talked about that show. last week. We should have an update on that situation. What happened? Well, we talked about last oh, week. Oh, she went to court. She's got to go back too. So they, she got postponed uh, as well. All right. Yeah, she was. Uh, so there's postponed your sister well. update on Mr. Ryan Clark. Where's the? Uh, what are you looking for now? Looking for we're doing the, a show. Uh, up here, bro. Yeah, but this references. Oh, this is a reference? Right here. Your little card. Can you see that? Can you see that? No, they can't see it. It's just a shiny white card here. What do you mean? Well, look, you got the camera right in front oh. of you. You can see what they see. That's what they It's the town of Post and Kill. I got to go back. Uh, I got to go on uh, July July 14th. What's what's it say on the back? What mm -hmm. is it? It's uh, July 14th. So we'll go. And you got to pay a fine, and it's, what, $100 for a seatbelt ticket? Even if I'm it's sure seven years old, they don't add on. Like, if it's a library no, no, book. That's what I was thinking. Right, a library right. book, it's five cents a day or whatever it is nowadays. But, right. You know. Yeah. So anyway, i got to go back on uh, the 14th. All right. Paid off. But anyway, been, and then my license is on suspended and everything else. Libraries. So anyway. day. Yeah, I feel so old even talking about libraries. Like, kids today are yeah. like, what's a library? Books? What do you mean books? No. Is it on the computer? DVDs it was, and everything. Books.com? Is that right? where I go? All right. <clears throat> So that's, that's about it, right? Yeah. Supposed to get some big thunderstorms tonight between 11 and 1 a.m. So may have to shut down the computers and everything else coming up here in a little really? bit. Really? Smackdown's being taped from uh, Columbus, Bad Ohio storms. tonight. Bad storms. Uh, They've got tornado uh, warnings out by uh, yeah. Buffalo and Syracuse and everything. Our power went out the other day with the candles out and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. It didn't yeah. last long, but yeah, thank God, right? Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, um, uh, WWE SmackDown main event being taped tonight in Columbus, Ohio. That's on the East Coast, so we're Who good said to go there. This? I'm a fan of my Columbus, Ohio. Christopher Columbus. I don't remember the guy's name. He was the very first guest on Piper's Pit. Uh, God, I should know this name. They're going to give me in the chat. I'm going to feel stupid. Uh, okay, Frankie Williams. He's like, okay, Frankie. Okay, Frankie. Who Piper's Pit, your buddy Roddy Piper, the very first I'm, guest. I know who Roddy Piper is. The who very first guest. Frankie Williams. I'm explaining that. The very first guest okay. Roddy Piper ever had on Piper's Pit when they first debuted Piper's Pit. Almost like a rib on him. He says, give me a... He, his exact words to Vince McMahon at the time was when uh, Vince was expanding, trying to go nation, nationwide with his company. So uh, Piper and, and Vince are at a bar, and, Piper, and they're drinking a beer just like this. And, and Piper says, you know, he says, Vince, you give me a mic stand, a bow tie, and five weeks, I get the job done, and I'm out of here. Something like that. Something to that effect. So Vince gives him his own segment, Piper's Pit. First time any wrestler had his own segment. Okay. His very first guest... Is a jobber. Remember how in the 80s they had jobbers who would literally their whole job was just come on TV and lose to the stars, take their finishers, and make them. still have fun. that in 2014. No, we don't really have jobbers anymore. I mean, every once in a while they'll have guys that we know do jobs, but they don't have guys that are literal no names that are just designed to lose the names. We just had Dewey, Dewey something on a TNA pay per view who came out. That's in TNA. Yeah, they did that. They did the jobber gimmick with EC3. It was Dewey Finn or something like yeah, that. And it was another guy they right, had the next week. Right. 
But that's not well, the that's same. Well, a jobber. No, these guys were permanent jobbers. Like, for 10 years, they would come in. Like, the Hardy Boys started out as jobbers in WWF. All right. All right. Long story short, Frank Williams is Piper's first guest. He's a jobber. So, Piper has nothing to say about this guy. He's just some guy that loses match. He says, Frankie, where are you from? And Frankie, with a very thick Puerto Rican accent and freckles all over his face, says, I'm from a Columbus, Ohio. And Piper said when he heard that, he said he thought to himself, here we go. Now I'm from Columbus, Ohio. He said, honey, you're the only Puerto Rican I know with uh, freckles or something like that. Yeah. Hey, he hey. says, yeah, I, I, he would have said, I, I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I traveled over to Columbus and started right, wrestling. Right, right. He's like, I might not have had Piper's Pit a second week. Right, right, when right. he said, I'm from a Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> <laughs> we're off, baby. Piper's a man. There When's he going to be on our show, by the way? Uh, and Vince Russo. I gave you guys the updates Sunny. on everything last week. Man. All right, I thought you just talked to him again this week. You showed me a, a text message. No, you know what? Roddy uh, Roddy sent me a direct message on on Twitter and basically said so he could help you out. He would. Yeah. Well, he said if I can ever help you or your family out. Uh, yeah, uh, very random say. message, but that's it came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, Roddy sends He's random an eccentric fellow random stuff out of nowhere. He'll yeah. be like, uh, just out of nowhere on on Twitter. He'll, he'll be like. I love Ryan Clark. Ryan, Ryan's my boy. You know, Ryan, Ryan's great. I, I do anything for Ryan. Out of nowhere. You know, violent Ed in the chat room. WZROnline.com slash chat. We like to incorporate the chat. Uh, he uh, he says in the chat room, number one jobber of all time, Brooklyn Brawler. I would have to disagree, and I would have to say, Matt Boone? Was I ever a jobber? No. Don't answer that. Shit. Barry Horowitz. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, Scott yeah. Hall used to say when he was in WCW, he said, yo, he, he would call WWE and say, yo, just give me Barry Horowitz's job. If I'm going to be a job guy for the rest of my life, I want to at least do it for the Yankees. Even Barry Horowitz has a baseball card because WWE would release baseball cards. Right, and right, they would right. even release cards that are jobbers, like right. their high-end jobbers, like Barry Horowitz, who had the star of David, and he would pat himself on the back. And, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go. Let's get into it. Uh, we're like I said, we're gonna run down our slam anniversary from this past Sunday night, uh, Monday night Raw from last night as well. We're gonna try to do that here in about forty minutes in our numero uno, in our numero dos. Last Thursday, there were a lot of cuts in WWE. A lot of roster cuts happened. Teddy Long. What Brothers was it? Clay, what day was it? Thursday. Okay, I was going to say, it was right after WZR, a day or two later. Yeah, it always yeah. happens to where we have to wait a whole fucking week. By the mm. time we get to the show, it's kind of old news. Right, right. You know? um, so, there were a lot of roster cuts last Thursday. You know, Teddy Long, Brodus Clay, Vicky Guerrero is going to be leaving WWE, although she wasn't one of the cuts. Uh, JTG made it almost the entire day he and then the, picked he, up his phone and... <laughs> he was the running joke all day. Wasn't right. Because right. they started off with like four cuts. Right. Right. And we figured it out to where all it right. was six cuts at first, and then it was and then they four at first. It was six. No, it was four. When you got to it, it was six. Because when when Charlie, my boss, when he was posting it, his first post was four names. It was the only four on the list. Mm. And then they had a fifth because you had Kurt Hawkins and he didn't. That was the one he didn't have. Okay. And then from Hawkins on, they just started adding names here and there. Right, right, right. Long story short, though, I think we figured it out to where they couldn't put the names up until they were until they were contacted. Yes. Yeah, so right. They'd be calling guys, and then the JTG joke all day was. How does this the guy still have a job? They're firing right. all these named right. superstars to free a budget, and this guy still has a job. He hasn't, well, he and hasn't been used in years. But uh, the, then the joke was when he got released, he his tweet was exactly what we right, said. Right, right, right. You exactly. want to say, yeah, it was. Well, it's JTG, like why I answer my phone. What well, damn? Why I answer my phone yeah. or something like that? Well, right? He said it like a goofy way. He said, "Why <laughs> I answer my phone?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. He knew. He knew. You know. Um, I, you know, I, I, you know, who I thought was going to go was. Uh, and and well, we gotta add real quick before we get off JTG. We gotta add him to the list of guys that we, we get on the show. Yeah, right, you're, right, you're right. I can, I can talk to Chad. Boys. So right, get yeah, JTG yeah. up on here. You know what? I I think uh, her saving grace, if you will, was uh, Rosa Mendez. As you know, she's gonna be on the upcoming season. Who, who of, are we talking about? Rosa Mendez. Who you said her saving grace? Her saving grace. Uh, oh, Rosa Mendez is saving grace that she didn't get fired. The fact that she didn't yeah. get fired is. They just added her to. Uh, she was one of the divas. female names that you would think if they're going to ask a diva or two, right. she's near the top of that list. But 
like you said, they already put the press release out for next season. For, for, and for I think Ryan they've already Rumble. filmed a lot of that shit, too. They were filming last night at, yeah. at Monday Night Raw. But I think so. even before that, she's been being filmed for right. a couple right, of weeks. Right, right, yeah, so they've season. got that stuff on camera. Yeah, right. they got in the camera. Not only that, but they're... Remember the whole Michael Hayes thing where there got was... Got her a, drunk or something? Yeah, an overseas yeah, tour? Yeah, yeah, There was a diva... I remember vaguely. Somebody came out and said... I think it was Chris Masters came they out. They sent her to rehab, right? Rosie. They sent her to rehab, yeah. and then uh, she recently came back. But I think it was Chris Masters came out and said, what if I told you guys that there was a diva who's in WWE, and the only reason that she's got a job oh, blown yeah. is because she's sucking Michael yes. Hayes off. All right. Uh, and then it came out that Michael Hayes and Rosa Mendez were in a bar together, <laughs> and Hayes was buying her beers, this, that, and the yeah. other thing. Getting she, a load. Got, she got real drunk and caused a, a scene. And they wound up sending her to rehab, so that was kind of confirmation. What's the significance of the milk then? Why are they dumping milk all over her? Why? Why milk? That was Oksana. No, no, no. Oksana was the popcorn in the water. We talked about Oksana got released, right? The, and then that was what we did, joked about. Three days before her release, her last appearance on Raw was losing to Alicia Fox or right. beating her. Well, no, she was in her corner when Fox lost. After the match or something, but either way, let, the the whole story was. Fox Rosa has nothing to do with the milk. I, I know. No, okay. yes, she does. No, yes, she does. You'll see the chat room tell you I'm right. Okay. Anyways, can I just okay? So Fox has her queen meltdown like she always does. Her big meltdown was she poured water and white, white popcorn all over Oksana's face. Okay. Rubbed it in the mat and then wiped it in her mouth. Dirty right. popcorn. Three days later, Oksana's fired. Rosa Mendez got attacked backstage by Summer Rae with milk. Then the following week, uh. Uh, oh no, that's Layla. Right, yeah, that's it Layla. Was Layla. You're right, Rosa does have nothing to do with this. I'm right. confusing Layla we and Rosa. We haven't seen Rosa in uh, You're in right, Rome. yeah. Okay, Layla's the one, and then they did the kitty litter. Right. Back to Summer. That's it's, Layla. It's Summer Ray, right. Layla, and. and, and Can we say it again? Clearly, so we can get a No, yeah, I got you. Yes. You're right. Yeah. I'm wrong. I love that. I forgot God, that I it was Layla, that. not Rosa. I, I get those two confused. Anyways. Uh, so, we'll talk about the releases a little bit more uh, in our numero dos. Take your live phone calls, do the rapid fire as well. Um, let's get into it. Uh, you got everything set up here. Thank you for all tabs. Yeah. Thank you for all the uh, yeah. stuff you did before the show because I was not doing good. I was very <coughs> happy. Um, all right, so we'll get these plugs out of the way and then we'll get into it. TNA Slam Anniversary from this past Sunday night, Monday Night Raw from last night. The official website, the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZRonline.com. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army. Oops, yourself. That's still good. Uh, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive. And we're on Twitter as well. Just go to WZRonline.com. Top navigation bars, drop down menu. It's got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. WZRonline.com. The official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. Live chat room on and popping tonight. WZR online. Dot com. Oh, fucking dot com. Slash chat. Slash chat. WZR online. Dot com. Dot com. We don't have to drink. They have to drink every time. I'm not their. Oh, fault. that's their gig. Yeah. Slash chat. WZR online. Dot com. Slash yeah. chat. Referencing, there. there's a drinking game that our fans have set up on the chat room there. WZR online. Dot com. Slash chat. Got to get in the chat room to find out the yeah, rules. Yeah, they the got their own. Game, yeah. Anytime we say this, because we say repeat shit a lot. Anytime they do plugs. Dot com. Anytime hey now or whatever. There's a drink. I don't. I don't want to toot my own horn or toot our own horn. What, toot toot. Toot toot. Yeah. What happened? I listened, I watched, you watched two different online internet radio shows, pro wrestling related not ours. shows. Not ours. Okay. Two different online pro wrestling related shows. Chair shot. <laughs> what? Over the course of the and past week. they were fucking garbage, weren't they? I gotta tell you, man. We're we good. We tear the house down every Tuesday. And it comes natural to us. That's what's scary. Yeah. It looks like a lot of effort right here. This is, I'm barely awake right now. Toot 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 toot. That's a train. Chippy chippy. Toot toot. I was thinking of Major Pain. You remember that? We are pretty fucking good. We're fucking great. Toot toot. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So we kicked off uh, TNA Slam Anniversary from this past Sunday night. Top to bottom. Arlington, we ran it down. Texas. Arlington, just outside of Fort Worth. Yes. Dallas. Right. In Dallas area, area where the Von Erichs were legends growing up. And yes, sir. That was in the middle of the show. But yeah, what did you think of the show? Thought the bottom. What I think uh, I thought it was. Bottom, uh, I thought it was. Yeah, I'd say B plus. A 
solid B plus. Yeah, yeah, B, yeah. B plus. Is there something right here on my? I, there's something. Is there a piece of hair or something? No, no? just ugly face, all right there. Yeah. Yeah. All in that area. Maybe there's an eyebrow or something. There's something I would see it. I that see I keep it. seeing out of the corner we of my eye. We got tons of lights right here for the camera, and uh, I don't see anything. All right. Good to go. So they kicked it off with the uh, the X Division title ladder match. They ended this fairly well, late six, in the game. Six, six man? Six man. Six it man. was. Okay, I yeah. can't. I, I know it was Sonata. Uh, Sonata is awesome. Yeah. Man. He's the blonde hair. The Wrestle, uh, Wrestle Un. I said. New Japan. I almost said Wrestle Uno. No, Wrestle One. Wrestle One. Wrestle that's One. I almost said Wrestle Japan. Uno. Uh, Ring of one. Honor. Ring of Honor's got the, uh, the relationship with uh, New Japan. But yeah, so it was Sonata. Defending against Tigre Uno, Manic, Crazy Steve from the Menagerie. How do you say that? The Manic, Menagerie. The Menagerie. The they Manic. love Crazy Steve. Yeah, they? they were chanting for them. They they love love Crazy uh, Steve. Eddie Edwards and David Ridge of the Wolves. And then uh, that was it. It was for the la uh, the X Division title ladder match. You, like you said, thrown sure. together last minute. So and, and somebody another show, uh, Melter had brought up that uh, kind of a shitty thing to do because this is a match where like Edge. Mm -hmm. Matt Hardy says it took years off their career. This is what they were saying on their show. Right. And they're exactly right. Like, if it's a big match that means something, it's important to a person's career, yeah, well, you need to go on. But just to throw it together last second on a pay per view that gets like 8,000, 9,000 buys, which is fucking all another story. Although they had decent attendance for this show. It was about 4,000. 3, 4, 3, yeah, 3, but 4, either way, I mean, anything in the thousands is better with, than what they've been doing. But I mean, the match was great. Like, but just the point was, like, these guys are risking a lot of injury, concussions if they hit each other with the ladders, broken bones, you know, whatever, right. and just, just in general wear and tear that's gonna take time off their career. But they did work the match in a, I don't want to say a safe style, but they didn't do a lot of shit with the ladders. So I don't know. I mean, there were they did a lot of dives. dives right? But they do those without the ladder. Like, you're if it was a regular right. six-man tag, you'd see them save guys diving through the ropes, above the ropes. You're right, you're right. The ladder stuff where you hit, like, where you take a ladder and, like, fucking jam it in right. someone's head. Right. Or right. you body slam them on it and their back's all torn. Like, they didn't do a lot of that. They did some right. of it, but not a lot. I agree. Crazy Steve had the one spot where he was doing the helicopter spin with the ladder. Right, right. And, uh, but but the that's, guys that's got a spot hands, where uh, you can protect yourself yeah, by putting That's what I'm up. saying. Right. There wasn't a lot of... But like you said, there were, a, damage. there were a ton of dives. A ton oh, of dives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's um, an any X Division match. Right. But right, those little okay. guys, they love to fly around dives. Uh, Tigre, Tigre Uno was nasty. I mean, some I'll of the spots you, that he took were My were favorite brutal. spot of the evening was a very simple one. It was Jeff Hardy as well, <coughs> which right. I could go on a rant for a fu I could do the whole show on this on this subject. Well, it's later, right? He's we'll their it. biggest name in the company, and they have him performing as Willow, which nobody fucking knows. The know. biggest, that's like if you had Hulk Hogan, if you're a struggling, emerging, trying to be number two company in North America, and you spend the money and you get Hulk Hogan, and you say, yo, th he had a childhood fantasy of being uh, Mask the Flamingo when he grows up or something, whatever right. it is. And then when it, just because he's there and he's got say, like, all right, you can be Matt Flamingo. When we put you on the poster, it's Starry Matt Flamingo. Nobody knows who the fuck that is. That is. Nobody I knows mean, Willow. I mean, uh, listen, Willow's a gimmick. Jeff Hardy. Hardy. Je Jeff Hardy started out as Willow in the um, Omega. Nobody, the diehard fans. No, in, the o it. in the Omega promotion, and it's something that he wanted to use on national television where he wanted to bring it up to Impact, and they let him do it. It's I can see that he wanted the to Willow revive. Jeff Hardy. Right, but and keep and, the name for the poster listen, for the advertising. That's, listen, you got the one guy to build off of. Him Matt Hardy, Matt Hardy's coming back at the Impact tapings. Yeah. They're going to reunite the Hardy Boys. I mean, well then, I'm nobody, talking about now. Yeah. Nobody said anything about it, and we'll get to this later. But Devon's back, and they're about to induct. Well, is he back 3D. working, or is he just back to get inducted? We put up an article on the website today that. Nobody knows for sure He's in good if shape. Devon is back full time. Right. Son of a bitch looks uh, good. But listen, I mean, I'm thinking, all right, you've got Team 3D, you've got the Dudley Boys, you know, about to be inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. Yes. I'm sure they could work out a deal with Devon. You've got the but Hardy Boys. Bully, Ray no, Bully Ray's going to all of it. You've got the Hardy one Boys thing. coming yeah. back. Very true. The Dudley Boys, the Hardy Boys, do a match between those two teams, probably... At the next pay per view, which is I don't know, Bound, Bound for Glory, for glory. I, their biggest show which is the WrestleMania yeah. show. So, and I was thinking one step further earlier. That thought crossed my mind. I'm like, yo, the Hardys are reuniting. They're inducting Team 3D. You gotta do Christian it. has a pass in TNA. Christian Cage, Edge mm -hmm. obviously can't do it, and he, and he never right. would anyways. But it would right. just be cool 
Baby, I was thinking more along the lines of Hall of Fame inductions. You induct all three teams, Edge and Christian, the Hardys and the Dudleys, but none of their histories in TNA right. as teams. Christian has individual history, Edge has none. Bully Ray has more as himself than he does his Team 3D, I think. I think the Bully Ray was a bigger footprint in his career in TNA mm -hmm. than his joint duo with Devon as Team 3D, the recycled Dudley boys from WWE. Right. I think Bully Ray really broke out as a successful character. But bottom line, the whole Willow thing was he had a spot where he literally just dived backwards and he doesn't look. Did you see that? Wow, this he, is when? Slammiversary. Slammiversary? Yeah. He, uh, who did he work? He worked, uh, fuck, who did he work? Ah, uh, Bully Ray? No, Willow. Oh, Willow came out, um... He worked too, on the oh show. Oh, jeez. Uh, you put me on the spot the tab. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I know, you got me all fucked up with the tab. I can't think of it. Ethan Carter 3 was Bully Ray. Willow and Magnus. Magnus, okay, Magnus. But, yeah, it, it was more than just Magnus. Maybe Spud was out there too, or but Because they had a couple guys to catch him, but he literally just... He was on the apron. He just threw himself backwards, and he didn't even look. Right. He just threw himself backwards, looking straight ahead. Yeah. As like a back body cross splash. Instead of going this way, he said, flash, right. backwards, yeah. without looking. Yeah. I was yeah. like, that yeah. is fucking crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. So they, uh, yeah. Really cool, too. We had MVP, and uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. We'll talk more about it. Uh, we had MVP, here's Bobby Lashley, and uh, that was a cool spot. Kenny King. Yeah, uh, well, Sonata, Sonata retained here. There you go. Yeah. Um, climbed up the ladder, grabbed the title, which is hanging above the yeah. uh, ring. We had MVP. He's going to be gone soon. Sonata. Sonata's going back to uh, Wrestle One or Japan, right, right? When? Like a couple weeks, couple months? How long do think, we got? Well, he's got to drop the strap. He's got. They got to take the title off. Yeah. Him, unless they still want to continue the relationship where he defends the TNA title overseas and they comes do back tape, here and there, and they tape a month in advance. So they don't right. need him for one day technically to do. I mean, you know what? Month of TV. You know what? He probably drops it in New York City at the Impact tapings, Hammerstein Ballroom. Yeah, I can see that. You know, they like to do title changes in. And he's either wrapping up right around there or right after. There, yeah, I believe. Yeah, and they could do it, you know, eight weeks from now, as they're going to tape so much TV, like you said. How many do we know? Are they taping? How many? Oh, dude, I mean, per, per night, I would say they can probably. They usually you know, do a show and a half, two or three. They could probably do two impact tapings a night, and they've got what four shows lined. I don't know. That's what I was asking. Something like that. And so it's all TV, tape. or is it? It's some... all TV. They're doing okay. a couple of uh, one night, one night only specials as well. Pay per view so, tapings, right? But it's all right. televised stuff. Not it's all televised, televised stuff. Okay. No. No and they're going to Hammerstein. Hammerstein. And this weekend... They're actually going upstairs to the Grand Ballroom. And this weekend we got Ring of Honor, who's going to probably outdraw TNA on pay-per-view. I got a big problem with Do Ring of Honor disagree with that? on pay-per-view. I, I agree with Ring of Honor going to pay-per-view. No, do you agree that they'll outsell... Do you think they'll draw... Maybe not consistently, but certainly this first show... Right. It's going to outdo Slammiversary. It, no. Yeah, yeah. It won't. Slammiversary does about 10,000, 15,000 buys. You don't you, think Ring I, of Honor I'll can tell you generate why. 10, They don't have TV. But. I'll tell you why. Well, Ring of, Ring of Honor does have TV. Not but national. Sinclair, okay. they got, they're in like a third of the country. They're in... A, they're in 36% of the country. I would say over half the country. 36% okay, is the exact. You can Google it. 36% of the country. 36%. Here's, here's the problem. Maybe 34. Here's the problem. Okay. TNA, national television deal. They're on Spike TV. Okay. A couple million people. Watch them every week, but right? They can't convert. Okay, oh, all right, but they can't convert. So TNA's got million over a million people that watch them on a weekly basis. Yes. Ring of Honor, Sinclair Broadcasting don't even come close to nope, a million people, they don't. right? So keep in mind, TNA's got the million plus that they they that they reach. Then they go and yeah. put on a pay per view. Who? And and the problem I have with the Ring of Honor pay per view, there was no advertising during Raw last night. There's been no advertising on Impact. Sinclair hasn't spent any money to promote this. Jim Ross even came out in a blog and says, well, I forgot there was a Ring of Honor pay-per-view this weekend. I forgot there was a Ring right. of Honor. So who is going to I'll order the Ring of Honor pay-per-view? You know who? The diehard yes. Ring of Honor fans, which ain't which ain't 12,000 people that are going to sure spend is. money, that are going to spend money sure to order is. on... Listen, the, for eye pay per views, Ring of Honor gets like fifteen hundred, two thousand people for eye pay per views. You're telling me that First if they draw that, that if they draw that much for eye pay per views, these people are going to spend eyes, those eye pay per views have such a rep of, of being like you know you're not going. And the bottom line is, pay per views just feels bigger. Look at it this way: Bellator has less viewers than TNA. Bellator is the fighting company. They have less viewers, and they're on every week too. They're on Friday nights, Spike TV, same channel, same demo, same time slot, prime time. 
Bellator every weekend, every Friday. Worst night and Thursday, you could argue, depending on competition with sports. But anyways, they get less viewers than TNA Bellator does. What did they just draw on their first pay-per-view? They got lucky. A hundred thousand. I am. TNA draws ten thousand. You're How telling much me Ring of Honor. You're telling me Ring of Honor got fifteen thousand diehard fans that says, yo, this is their very first pay per view. This is their big fucking debut on pay per view. Not to throw down with their eye pay per view numbers and you're asking them to spend triple the amount of money, twenty nine dollars for a pay per view. Yeah. When they bought the pay per view. I don't think the I don't think the amount of money is the issue. I don't think they come close to I think TNA it's the amount of interest. Them. And they don't have any advertising, but they do have a die-hard following. Why wouldn't Sinclair put in advertising on Raw for their first pay-per-view? I don't know. That I can't deal. answer. First of all, it shouldn't be Sinclair. It should be the companies like DirecTV, Dish Network. They don't have WWE anymore. They don't really have wrestling anymore. They've got TNA, but they don't push it. Why they, they've got MMA, and they got boxing. So when they run their local commercials, DirecTV, Dish right? Network, all those uh, companies... Wrestling, all they have now is TNA and ROH. You you would think they should at least try and expose it to a wrestling audience by Absolutely. buying time during Raw, during Sm- highly viewed yeah. wrestling and sports entertainment shows. Yeah. I have no defense for that. That's retarded that they didn't do that. I didn't see any commercials last night. Did you know? Uh, I mean, you... were in upstate New York. Is, you know what I mean? Like, I can right. see maybe Idaho. Idaho doesn't have... They didn't buy the commercials. It's not a big market. We're in New York. Right. This is, the, this is their, their first pay-per-view. You know? This is a big deal for Ring of Honor. They're First Huge. real pay per view. It's a it's a it's a milestone for the company. Like ECW, never had. ECW was a local, somewhat territory that would spread around a little bit of the East Coast, and they had little shit TVs here and there, but it was right. fucked up times, and limited right. exposure, limited access. But when they ran a first pay per view, it felt big, and I think they did like eighty thousand, ninety thousand, or something. I mean, that right. was in a whole different time, I just, I, I, whole different era, different right. ball game. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Like the right, magazines right. were still kind of big then. Internet was new, and ECW was the fucking king of the magazines and the internet early don't, on. Don't get me wrong. I think Ring of Honor right now. Ring of Honor is the better promotion uh, over TNA. Yeah, let's say it. I love way. watching Ring of Honor. You, you, you turn Slammiversary off and you have it memorized. And then you right. watch Ring of Honor. Was it Best in the World? Is that what they're calling Best it? Best in the World's coming you up. You turn that fucker off when it's over. Which show do you think is going to be a better product? Uh, Slammiversary is pretty fucking good. There's probably it a bad comparison. <laughs> probably a bad comparison. But depending still, on what Ring of Honor can I do. still think Ring you're, of Honor tops that. Yeah, you, you're probably right. Ring of Honor is going to be more energy. There's going to be more. Right, they're right. more excited. They're going to really, really go. I just don't. I don't think Ring of Honor. I mean, granted, they're running their first pay per view. I wish them all the luck. I would. And like, where are they running it? I would like for Ring of Honor at the old, uh, the old, Isn't uh, like Tennessee or something. Yeah, shit? I think it's at the old, uh, fairgrounds, right? Okay, National, National fairgrounds. fairgrounds sounds right. I think so. Maybe. I think so. Tell us in the chat if we're wrong. WZR online. I, w- I would love, I would last chat. I would love for Ring of Honor to become the number two promotion in the United States, but I don't think. I, I mean, don't think TNA, there's such thing as a number two. T- but, but TNA. Nobody takes TNA seriously T- or ROH. TNA's been doing pay per views for years now. They've got over a million people that watch Spike TV every week. Ring of Honor has a couple thousand people that watch their eye pay per views. Other than that, maybe a couple thousand. Not anywhere close to the millions that watch them on national television. You're comparing a million people that watch Impact versus a couple thousand that watch iPay per views and, and their television program on a weekly yeah. basis. There's no way that Ring of Honor tops TNA in pay per view buys. I yeah, just, it's going to be the fairgrounds in Nashville, Tennessee is what they're saying. Is that where they? Is that what they called the TNA Asylum? The, it was the old TNA Asylum. Do you remember who named it the TNA Asylum? I do. TNA, oh. It's one of the early breakout stars. As soon stars. as you uh, say it, you're going to... Ron? Ron uh, Killings. The Truth Ron Killings. the Truth. Yeah, he was over like Rover. Right. But, uh, no, but my point is there is no number two. To, to say there's number two means the average casual wrestling fan says, yo, I love wrestling, and there's a great WWE show, great TNA show, great Ring of Honor show. No, the wow. average wrestling fan only knows WWE. There is no number two even in the conversation. You have to be a diehard fan to watch or give a shit if you're, if about you're, TNA and certainly so for Ring of Honor. You can somewhat be casual with TNA because they're on TV every week, but they don't have any casual viewers. That's been clear through their ratings. The people watching their show are their diehard audience that's there no matter what. When you look and at they chip away at that. When, when you look overseas from the United States, you say, okay, over in Japan... New Japan Pro Wrestling is the number one company. That's that's the yeah, big but even daddy, it's right? falling way off. It's falling way off. But when you coming from the United States, we we go over there yeah. and we say that over in Japan, New Japan Wrestling is number one. Uh, All Japan 
is probably I don't think, two. Does it even exist anymore, All Japan? All Japan, I think so. I don't think that's even open anymore. All right, and Wrestle 1 Maybe. is probably number three. You go over to Mexico. Noah, Tri- Pro Wrestling Noah. Pro Wrestling Noah. There's you a go bunch over, of You go over to Mexico. Uh, AAA is the biggest promotion, yeah, right? CMLL. In the United States, looking in from yeah. the United Kingdom, if you're over in the United Kingdom, you're looking into the United States. People are going to say, okay, your top promotions in the United States are number one, WWE. What's number that mean? Two, what, what's your point? Number two, TNA. Yeah. Number three, Ring of Honor. Within the saying. industry, yeah, TNA. It doesn't matter what's just, in the industry. I'm just saying. Viewed. I mean, when, they will get the better talent, when, most likely. When you look, you're right there. If Ring of Honor starts to become considered the number two promotion instead of TNA, that's where the talent's going to go to. Right. That's Absolutely. the entry level. They're going to be like, yo, I don't want to go to TNA. Just, That's a waste. The ROH is the real number two. They know how to develop I'm, talent. I'm just WWE saying, takes the looking in from, from another country, people are going to say WWE's number one, TNA's number two, and yeah, Ring of Honor's number three. But that three. doesn't help business. That's one, two, and three, but yeah. that's... That's what we're talking about. Well, no, my is point, the top three promotions in yeah. America. If we had to rank them, WWE, TNA, no, Ring of Honor. No, no, we were talking about the pay per view. And if ROH says bigger numbers, you said they could replace them as the number two. My point was there really isn't a number. I mean, technically there speaking, is. yeah, obviously mathematically, there's a number one, number two, and number three. Right. But as far as relevance, there is no relevant number two company. There's two companies that if you're not a diehard wrestling fan, you don't know about them, you don't watch them, you don't give a shit about them. Okay. So to be relevant and to be a legitimate number two company, you, there has to be real interest. And, and there's not in either one of those. If right. ROH sells more pay-per-views, TNA sells more pay-per-views, All right, but still not relevant company. Though. Right, I, I get that. WWE is leaps and downs way ahead of everybody else. Yeah. But behind them would be... I'm not arguing that. If I'm not retarded, I know there's right. other, other right. companies. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, MVP, Bobby Lashley come out. They basically uh, tell us what TNA had already announced on their website, that MVP's injured, he's out of the match, so we're going to yeah. have two matches tonight. They're there word for word, what we already Right. Mentioned. The winners of those two matches are going to go on to the main event to face Eric Young for the TNA World Heavyweight title. It was basically exactly what, uh, yeah. what they announced. We had uh, Samoa Joe against Bobby Lashley. Crowd was hot, man. Crowd that was, was good too. really hot. Joe's Rob great, man. I, I, Joe's awesome. I can't. I, he's why don't not, they push him? Why don't WWE take him? Yeah. My wor- my worry would be is they would do that typical Samoan Uso head shrinker fucking three minute warning bullshit on, with them. But Kevin Steen to WWE. I heard that. Yeah. All right, Kevin, dude. Listen, I love me some Kevin Steen. You guys know figure. that. We talked about that last week. Kevin Steen in WWE. Listen. He's the new Big Dick Johnson. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Please. I'm begging you, WWE. Prove me wrong and bring Kevin Steen in and make him a somebody. I got this fear. Mm-hmm. And I think He's any... Got a good fear. I think any Ring of Honor, diehard Ring of Honor fan would also have the same fear. Kevin Steen in WWE... It's a completely different guy. It's the next Big Dick Johnson. It's I what, hope not. What happens Please is they look at something. guys. The guys that have that don't have the look. He doesn't have the look. Yeah, they don't have the look. They're fat. Let's say yeah. Vince will look at and and I'm not saying it like I know this for a fact, but this is what I hear. This is what you hear is that he looks at him and he immediately labels him. Right. Instantly labels him. Right. And once you have that label, that's who you are. Right. And make the best of it, kid. You know what I mean? So, exactly. I don't think he's going to get a good label, Kevin Steen. I Wait, think they're going to look at him and say, gonna, and say, what the fuck is this? How the hell did he get in here? You, you know are a mean? comedy figure. You are going to turn into Yeah, the, which sucks, because as much as I bag on him here with I his know. promos that he cusses a lot. He's a great worker. He's a good worker, and he's and he, he's got the talent to cut a good promo. If you have to censor him and he can't cuss, then yeah, we'll see if he can sink or swim. I, ho- I hope to God. I think I, he can. People, people in the chat room saying... Steen's a monster, this, that, and the other thing. I hope you guys are right. I hope they bring Steen in as this killer, monster-type figure, but I have this fear that Kevin Steen doesn't have the typical look that WWE is looking for for him to be a main event star. Now, that's not to say that they couldn't bring him in and give him a completely different gimmick than what I'm thinking. I'm thinking he's coming in as, as a he's comedy He's the next figure. Funkadactyl. He's the next Funkadactyl. He's a jerk off. Play. Yeah. yeah. Right. Funkasaurus. Funkadactyl. He's, uh, the, he's one of those. Funkadactyls are the women. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Funkasaurus. Whatever, yeah, yeah, bro- yeah. I think he's the next Brodus Clay. He's somebody like that that they're going to bring in. And you're just going to be like, wow, dude, this is the Kevin Steen that I saw in Ring of Honor. 
And this is the WWE, Kevin Steen. They WWE-ized ah. him, yeah. I mean, and that's what's kind of... They WWE-ized him. It kind of sucks that guys right. like CM Punk run around. Daniel Bryan's not in the mix and relevant because of the injury. If you think about it, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro. You I mean, you look up and down the top, top of that roster. Right. And there's a lot of guys that are ROH born and bred that just happen to get a chance and happen to make it. And not get stuck with a label. They tried to label Daniel Bryan a little shithead. Right. They kind of tried it with CM Punk a little bit. I mean, right. they, they had him in the straight edge thing that he liked doing in, in the beginning of the uh, the ECW Part 2 promotion. Um, Let me say this. Slayer in the chat room says killer promos go a long way. Right. I get that. But it's all about the type of promos that WWE type. gives him. Mm. What is WWE? If WWE gives him... A comedy act. Yeah, if he's got a, a character, the, 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 right. if he's got a character like we're talking about, it which all I, depends on the character. If he's got a character, the promo will reflect that character. Right. So there's no exactly. such thing as, oh, he's going to cut a great promo because if he's a big dinosaur or functosaur or whatever he is, he's got a certain kind of promo he's supposed to cut. He, right. This kind of comedy, this kind of subject right. matter, this kind of whatever. Exactly. And if you box him in a, in a spot like that, it, there really is no talent. It all depends through. on what type of gimmick they're going put to this give way. him. Like, like Damien said. Sandow, they gave him the worst shit gimmick as a dancer the other week, and he, he did amazing with it. Right. Doesn't matter. You're still, Doesn't matter. You're still right. a jerk off dancer. You think, oh, right. he did a great job. Let's make him the next world champ. Fuck no, that ain't happening. You know, Correct. Like, maybe Correct. through years of persevering, maybe. Correct. But I mean, the track record of guys who've done that hey, with the label from day one. Ooh. I love Kevin Steen just as much as you, Ring of Honor Marks, and God, I hope that they use him right. But I got a bad feeling. Then they take uh, not Roderick Strong. Was it Roderick Strong? The other guy that took. Who was the other guy they taken? No, it was uh, Kevin Steen it was and ACH. Uh, Kevin Steen and who the fuck was the other guy? They were in Roderick, Strong. With Roderick, but I don't. I don't think he wound up. Yeah, signing no. Deal. Steen's the only one that signed so far. But right. it was those three, I think, that they were. Trying out around the same right. time. Okay. Smojo uh, picked up the win there um, with a spear, right? He hit the, uh, it was a spear for, uh, for the pin. We had uh, the Carter family's backstage. We can skip over that. EC3 talks about beating up uh, beating up on Bully Ray. And here's where we got the uh, Willow Magnus match. A Willow Magnus. Uh, Magnus won clean, pretty clean. Um, well, he just right dropped here. the strap. You can't job him out. Right. right. I mean, you got to keep him as a top guy. Uh, Bram no, and Abyss game. came down and uh, and interfered here. Well, they were both at ringside. Like they were each like uh, right. uh, fuck. Magnus came out with Bram in his corner. Right. So when Willow came to the ring, Abyss came down to make sure that you know his eyes were easy. Big pop for uh, Janice when Janice came out. And then what happens is, well, Janice was there. Janice Carter. I know Janice Carter was there, uh, and that's a uh, um, rib rib. That's on why they on. call her Janice the stick in the, the bar bar or whatever. Yeah, but um. Okay. No, the funny thing was they had Abyss at ringside. He gets involved at the end, scares Bram off. Right. So now it's just Willow and Magnus, and Magnus still beats him. Right. Like right. He didn't I have know. any I cheating know. help. Abyss didn't stop the cheating. No, Abyss stopped the cheating, and Willow still lost. That wasn't very good, huh? It didn't make much sense. Right. Yeah. We had uh, Kurt Angle comes out, and... This uh, was cool. Oh, this was really cool, man. The, the fans uh, made it cool. The fans who would have knew? Who would have known that the the fucking Dudleys were that over in Dallas? We just put it up on the website. Um, Devon was nowhere to be found backstage during the afternoon, during the evening hours. Yeah. Nobody had any idea that Devon was coming in. If you heard, uh, Kurt Angle basically said, "Hey, listen, uh, being inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame was one of the greatest honors in my life." <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Okay, Kurt. Okay, he's right up there with one There's of his a gold medal in the Olympics. Olympics. Right. Right. Here it is. Hall of Fame plaques right next to his gold medal. Well, right next to each other. Right. Is. There's a scripted promo. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt, go out there and say it was one of the greatest moments in your life. Yeah. So, anyways, he goes out there and he basically says, "All right, let's get right to the point. This year's TNA Hall of Fame inductees are." Team 3 Look out, look out, look out. Drop the bombshell. Look out, look out, look out. Uh, so Bully Ray winds up coming out. Little pause there, and Devon follows. Yes. Crowd popped huge. Well, no, I think Bully Devon came out by himself, and then he Bully followed. Ray came out and pointed, and then Devon wound you're up right, coming right. through yeah, the yeah. curtain. Uh, Taz on commentary, and this is what I just talked about, where nobody knew that Devon was there. Taz goes way back with the Dudleys, uh, back in ECW, good friends, yeah. uh, well known that Taz is pretty good friends with Bully Ray and, and Devon. Yeah. Taz had no idea that, uh, that Devon that was, was there, 
So okay. the reaction of Taz on commentary where he said, I had no idea yeah. that this is crazy right now that Devon's here. Uh, that was completely legitimate. Uh, like genuine. Said, yeah. A genuine, legitimate, real. A, a real. He had no idea. So, uh, but if you look at TNA's Hall of Fame, there, it's it's legitimate. I mean, if you any guy that's in their Hall of Fame, Sting, right, Kurt Angle, that's it. Dudley Boys and the Dudley Boys, no. All of those acts belong in the WWE Hall of Fame. Absolutely. I mean, if you want to be one of those guys that argue Sting because he never worked in WWE, none of them are too, huh? No, none of those guys are. Yeah, no, yeah. but uh, I, I believe all of them will be eventually. I think so. I mean, yeah, through yeah. time. I mean, how can you not? If you're going to do tag teams, Dudley Boys have to be have there. Have to be there. If right. you're going to do uh, stars that weren't in WWE, guys, they've done a million guys like that, like uh, uh, Vern Gagne comes to mind. I mean, there's a billion of them that never even worked WWE. Uh, but they're still in Bill there. Bill Watts. There's, right. Yeah, there's a ton of them. Right. Uh, but they're still in there because they're such legends. Right. Uh, Sting is that kind of a legend, I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. At this point, uh, and yeah, Kurt Angle absolutely should be in there. So you're saying TNA's Hall of Fame's credible? I'd as say far as the names are. are I don't know if it matters their Hall of Fame, but the guys they've picked are legitimate Hall of Famers. Right, I agree. You know, they I all agree they're all deserving of a Hall of Fame status, even if it's a, a company whose Hall of Fame status doesn't mean shit. Right, they're still Hall of Fame caliber you know, guys. And I was surprised to see Devon. As you guys remember, when Devon was released from TNA. Twice they released him twice. They brought he him quit back the second time. The last the time, time, yeah, his contract ran up. He didn't. Left. He didn't have very kind words for uh, for TNA. Said that he would never return to TNA. He uh, said that he here? Got screwed over. No, 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 no. Oh, this was okay. this was. He came out in interviews and uh, said, "I'll never go back to TNA." I didn't like the way I was treated. Wow. Well, and then okay. he came out and referenced it on the microphone. He said, "You know, when he was cutting his promo, he said, listen I'm sure a lot of you guys are surprised to see me back here. As yeah. I said, I would never be back. Okay. Um, and sure enough, so a loud welcome back, one more match yeah. chance. They had uh, a loud we won tables chant. Billy Ray said something like, that was the best. That was the right, best right. we won tables <laughs> chant I've ever heard. Right, right. How was that so, uh, impression? Mm. Nah, I don't know. That was that. the best we won tables chant I've ever, I've ever heard. He does that thing with his words. He rounds him off. I'll give you an A for effort. I'll give you an F for fucking fail. Very hard, buddy. I'll give you a double F for fucking fail. All right. (laughs) All right. So here we go. Uh, We had uh, Austin Aries. We had Austin Aries versus Kenny King. You got it. Austin. Austin 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 Aries. Aries. All right, Austin Aries and Kenny King. This yeah. was a great match, man. And you knew on paper, yes. Kenny King, Austin Aries, basically Austin Aries. I think it was that great. I mean, I, it was this a good match. Good. This is a really good yeah, match. Yeah, it was a good match. Uh, they introduced Dallas Cowboys here. Got a mixed reaction in yeah. Dallas, huh? Not was many Cowboys fans. I thought that was the James Storm thing. Well, they they introduced them here. Oh, and then, and then the, and the whole segment was later. Okay. There's no other Texas teams, right? It's Dallas. Oh, there's the Houston Texans. Houston or the, uh, Texans. Is it Houston Texans? Or? It's Houston Texans. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, and there's other ones I think. Maybe they're Houston too. fans. Houston, yeah, Houston Oilers, no. Uh, uh, here's what you want to talk about, dude. The uh, the Von Erics. That's it, man. Houston and uh, Dallas. Yeah, I think that's that's it. It. No San is no San Antonio. No San Antonio. That's it, man. All right. San Antonio Spurs NBA champions. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Huh? Well, I called that. What do you think of uh, Ross and uh, and Marshall the Von Erics uh, against I, DJ Zima Ion and Jesse Goddard's. 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 I thought you were a fan of the bro, man. I am, but you I don't know, know how to say his name. The Jesse. Oh, uh, I don't even watch him. How to say his name? At least I say I think that's how you say it. Maybe it is Gadir. Oh, fucking cunt. Oh, what do you want from me? Gadir just sounds retarded. I would think it's Goddard's. But All right, um, let's talk about the goddamn. Match. I thought that it wasn't nothing special, but I thought that it. I'll put it this way, it's gonna sound retarded now. It felt special, but it wasn't nothing special. Like the Von Erics aren't like a tag team that's gonna set the world on fire. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yes. But uh-huh. the match itself felt cool. They were in Dallas. They Kevin Von Erick was there. The story, if you know the story of Von Erick, fucking, fucking forget about it. Right. A million suicides, a million overdoses, all the deaths. It's just a fucked up story. Uh, yeah. Kevin's the only one that survived. Those were his boys. They're in Dallas. Back when uh, he was coming up, the Von Erics were fucking gods. Right. There's a story. They went to Six Flags once, and the whole theme park had to be shut down because those three guys caused such a commotion. Really? Carrie, Carrie Von Eric, David Von Eric, Kevin Von Eric. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, so, but, uh, anyways, they had him, uh, do a match. It was a fun little match. Crowd was crazy hot for it. Kevin did the save at the end. The Suns the looked okay in. during the match. Yeah, yeah they looked fun. But, but, you know, they, they fit in. They did they hit the teenage yeah. style. They were up and yeah. down and here and there, and, you know. 
Angelina Love and Gail Kim. This is for the uh, TNA Knockouts title. God, Brian Stifler's the got the worst referee, yeah. name in the business. Well, and if you think Stifler. of Stifler, you think of American Pie. I think it's Stifler, and I think of a hard cop. Yeah, but no. To be honest with you. We don't watch movies. American Pie, the, the main character, and you've heard of American oh, Pie. Oh, Stifler, right, Stifler, right, right. Stifler, yeah. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, anyways. So they did a ref bump here. Earl Hebner came out. He got involved. He, like, right. tagged himself in his ref. He was like, here, yep. Right, Go, right. Get yeah. out of here. You're, I'm in, you're out. Uh, they Kim, did the hairspray finish. Kim accidentally uh, drop-kicked uh, Hebner at one point during the match. Yeah. The hairspray so finish. So Stifler came back, and then uh, right. uh, Velvet did the hairspray to, to oh, Gale. Right. Angelina Pender, one, two, three. One, two, three. Bully Ray against Ethan Carter in a Texas death match. Talked about Bully Ray earlier yeah. with the uh, the back spot, where he wasn't even... Uh, he wasn't no, looking. that was Willow. Oh, Willow. Yeah, Willow, Willow. Okay. Take but uh, no, Bully Ray did the. He came out like Stan Hansen with the fucking with the big rope and the dumbbell on, or not dumbbell, the bell on it, the cowbell. Mm -hmm. And he shook it around. He was doing the, the Stan Hansen thing. Uh, he did a typical spot where he cuts the ring with an exacto knife, right, a right, right. or whatever, and uh, tears Rips the ring the, up, uh, padding, the ring apron yeah. off. Yeah, right. Uh, he did all that stuff. And Finish a lot game. Of gimmicks and then two tables. Right. He put Ethan. Well, it was Dixie came out and uh, they teased that he was going to put her to a table, but they ended up making the. Blood saved her, took her off. Carter put him. Does the Dixie table. eventually go through a Obviously table? Obviously, that's what they're building up to. Probably yeah. at Bound for Glory. I know that's that months sense. away. I yeah. mean, but no, I, they've been building up for so long. That it seems so like that's that. the big payoff. Is right. that he finally gets her at the big show? Dixie right. finally goes through a table at the big show. So not only that, that, sell tickets. Yeah, how does we could, uh, yeah, but we could have Dixie go through a tight table at Bound for Glory. How do you promote glory? that? Dixie we Carter get, might get put into a table this Sunday night on Bound for Glory. It's a waste of fucking. Yeah. Yeah, not only that, it should but be a guy that you have do, a match with. Will we they, put them through the table finally? If they do Dudley's and, and Hardy's, like I would like them to do, uh, that would kind of rule out Dixie, I guess. Well, well it's Dixie like a post match come out. Yeah, right. but then she'd have to be. Then the Hardys have to be heel kind of, because why would she be helping the Hardys? Right, right. It is complicated. James Storm against Ken Anderson. Thank God they didn't get. I mean, Ken Anderson. Well, they had listen. James Storm fuck with the Cowboys first. Oh, that's right. And that's then Ken right. came out and did his promo. The whole reason they had James Storm, you know, screw with the Cowboys is spit beer in the face. They wanted media attention. You've got yeah. the Dallas Cowboys. He pissed there. on the helmet. Right, right. right not right. literally, but he like he acted like he was peeing on it with his beer. Right, and threw and a helmet down on Cowboys you're, helmet. You're trying to get media attention by doing stuff like that by, by inviting. Or right, exactly. They got uh, TMZ coverage out of it. Did they uh, get that? TMZ did All a right, big article. Work. Put it up on my Facebook. I said, well, TNA got what they wanted. That's the point. You bring in celebrities. Like Kevin Hart on Raw last night. You do an angle with wow. these guys. Yeah, they didn't Kevin use Hart him. Kevin Hart on Raw They sucked. didn't use him correctly. Well, they never use their celebrities right, but that motherfucker was on commentary what? talking about, whoa, what is this, dancing with the stars? Like, hey, dude, did anybody not tell you that's his gimmick? Right, right. Like, that's, what he's, that's what he does. You're acting all shocked. Like, But... TM TMZ did cover it and a couple other media outlets, so they got what they wanted. They brought the celebrities in, they had the Cowboys there, they hyped them up, and uh, they got media out of it. So that's the whole point. You get yep. some press out of it. And then the main event, dude, it was uh, uh, Kenny Anderson and well, James Storm. Didn't Anderson, really Anderson beat Storm and then celebrated with the Cowboys. So they got their the one up on James Storm in the end. Uh, Kenny Anderson, thank God. I mean, listen, I like the dude. He's a good worker, he's a decent worker, but on the microphone, I don't like... I have to you get annoyed by we, him. We reference Kevin Hart again. I don't like over-obnoxious people. Like, if you want to... if You can be funny and you overly can cut the obnoxious. jokes. Yeah. Overly obnoxious. But when you take the joke too far... Like, you can make a funny joke. I think and then Mr. leave it at funny, but... but he, he goes... I think his thing is he's too proud of himself when he's doing his something. thing. He thinks it's funnier than it is, so he's, like, really enjoying right. it. And you're like, dude, it's not even funny. Just shut up. But granted, a lot of wrestling fans... he gets fans, way into the bit too A much. lot of wrestling fans are, you know, younger. they're into corny comedy. Yeah, they're younger, like and that, that might be funnier yeah. than them, yeah. I don't know. Fuck, John Cena's the top baby face. What do you want to say? If you make a when joke... When we were growing up, it was Stone motherfucking cold Steve Austin... Was the top guy, and now it's John. So we should have the if, character right there. But uh, he's, he's if, if you make a joke, and if you make a joke and everybody laughs, or if you do something and everybody pops, and then you try to go one more and one more, and it goes like, to ah, fast. stop it, man! Now, he lived now a bit. Yeah. your joke that was funny or your pop that you got. Now you went overboard, and now you're just a lame cornball. It went stop. from being kind of funny to 
it to all right, uh, it's over yet. Right, to, oh God, shut up! Yeah. They didn't give him much yeah. mic time. No, uh, they kept it short. They kept it short and sweet. He said, "Ask for this, come down." But he's like, he's very ass. Miz. Like, there's a very unlikable yes. quality about yes. him. You look at him and you just dislike Miz-like. him naturally. Yes, that's Miz-like. just his personality. They should, they should be healing him, and they've got him as a baby face. So Eric Young, Ares, and Bobby Lashley in a cage match. Uh, they took some time to set up the cage. I'm surprised they, they had Ares go in instead. Of, I thought it'd be King and Lashley since they're part of MVP's group, and MVP was the original main event. Ares is out of the doghouse. Put that up on the website. Well, yeah, I just thought it was interesting. Out. I thought they'd have yeah. both of MVP's guys like two on one right Eric King like continues that. to overcome the odds just how he won the title right right uh it was kept fairly short they were running late on time you yeah. can tell us the match didn't start until about 10 40 10 45 it wasn't particularly it didn't feel like a main event to me when i was watching it, it wasn't like yeah, here we yeah, go right. man this is you're the right. match and even with tna usually there's a like eric young mvp while not the most important match and kind of who gives a shit it would have felt like the main event because that's what was positioned as the main event coming in right to this show. But you know what? I think I got the hiccups. TNA main events. And you know dude, what that means. TNA main events. I'm going to be hiccuping for the whole fucking second I know, hour. I know. They don't go away. Listen, TNA main events yeah. normally have run in after run in. It's a cluster. The dusty finishes. This yeah. wasn't that. Uh, you know, well, and great cage. Cage. Yeah. So what are you going to do? That's the idea. <laughs> but uh, Eric Young uh, wound up retaining the uh, TNA title here. So, no title changes at all on the entire show. That's true. I didn't think of that. No title yeah. changes on Slammiversary, your second biggest show of the year. But, anyway, so that was uh, TNA Slammiversary. You said a B plus. I'm going to go with I'm that. Gonna a B plus. Yeah. I'm going to go with a B plus, man. Fun show. Uh, a fun show with some really good wrestling. There you go. So, all right, here we go. We're gonna uh, we're gonna come back on the flip side. We're gonna run down Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, talk the WWE releases and take your live phone calls and do the rapid fire. If you want to submit rapid fire questions, tell them how they can do so. It's quite simple, Ryan. I'm glad you asked. You can go to <laughs> Facebook.com. I didn't get them. Slash <laughs> Ryan Clark WZR. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR Top Post. We'll ask for your questions and comments, and we will answer as many as them, as many of them as we can in a oh. rapid style fashion. In hour number two, it's rapid fire here on WZR TV. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Get your ass. All right, coming back on the flip side. Your live phone calls, rapid fire Monday Night Raw recap, and we're going to talk about the releases from last Thursday. You are listening. To WCR TV Tuesday with uh, Matt Boone and Ryan Clark. We'll be back right after this. We'll get to as many as we can in the second hour. We'll be taking your live phone calls at 518 712 3070, I believe is the number. And uh, we'll be running down WWE Raw, the releases from last week, and all of the other news and notes from the past, including uh, a UFC pay per view, which we haven't even mentioned yet, and those Space Field Boxing and Slump Park. Vladnikov fought, and uh, so we've got a lot to get to. We're waiting for the jerk off to get in here and join us. Speak of the devil, here he is. Yes, what the hell was I just uh, asking? I forgot. Guys, right, start to the outlet. I gotta take a piss and you're you just come in here and start to start the yeah, you're not relevant. second hour. Good chicken nuggets. Yeah, just had a couple too. What the fuck was I gonna say to you? I forget now. I was running shit down. I know we didn't talk about the UFC yet. We still got to cover that. Uh, we got Raw, the releases. That show sucked. Phone calls, rapid fire. There's something I'm forgetting. I can't remember. Okay. The releases. No, I mentioned that. But uh, anyways, so what do we got? Hour two. Hour two. Ah, uh, we got to talk Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> All right. Take a swig of beer over there. Monday Night Raw from last night. I run that down. You know I spent a lot of time on it, man, because I do want to take some rapid fire. We gotta fix week. these T-shirts before next week's show. I'm not doing a show next week if these ain't fixed. Is it bad? It just looks tacky on camera to have the white space over there on the on the. Why is there so much white space like right here? here? Yeah, I know. And then there's, I mean, it's just, they're all unfolded and just like these two look good right here. These look great, but you can't even see those on the camera. Or we're not really. This looks like garbage. We're not really this. high class. I'm here. just saying this is our you know, background. Look at the top of the background. The top of the background looks beautiful. Uh huh. And then the actual stuff they see looks like shit. Right. And it's an easy fix. We got to fix those before next week's show. 
That's what I'm saying. Get to it. I'm, I'm not good at that stuff. <laughs> Get you to it. You and your it. sister did that to begin with, if you remember. All right, so anyway... You um, need to fix your work. Let's get into it, man. <laughs> All right. uh, so that we can spend a little bit of time on rapid fire. Uh, some breaking news from the uh, WWE SmackDown tapings tonight. Uh, turn the uh, speakers down. Turn your speakers down. You don't want to be spoiled. Want to be spoiled for uh, Friday SmackDown? We'll give you the thumbs up when uh, we're done spoiling. They announced, um, as expected, we've been telling you guys it's going to be two ladder matches at the uh, at the Money in the Bank pay per view coming up on June 29th. They announced the second one on SmackDown. So basically, you're going to have the one on Raw. All the participants are now announced following Raw last night. That one's going to be for the World Heavyweight title. A new champion is going to be crowned. Yes. Over on SmackDown, they announced the second Money in the Bank ladder match a couple a couple minutes ago at the, uh, at the television taping. Seth Rollins came out, came out and uh, cut a promo, said that he was the first competitor involved in the match. He didn't have to qualify, just like he Orton. Didn't have to qualify, just right. like Orton didn't have to in the world title one. Right. The only thing bad about this is it's a status thing. It makes it makes it seem like and I know Rollins didn't join Evolution, You're but right. it makes it seem like Orton's here. You're right. Rollins is here. Orton gets a free pass to a title shot. Rollins gets a free pass to a shot at a title shot. Right. So it's exactly. uh, it already makes Rollins seem less important than Orton. So and he is in in reality. Yeah, in but WWE's coming off that coming right. off that breakup, you you could have changed it to where he's just as big of a player. So the winner of uh, the SmackDown Money in the Bank la ladder match, they're going to hold the briefcase, yeah. and for the next year, they're going to have a shot. The typical at Money in the Bank briefcase. Typical Money in the Bank, which you guys are used to, where Thumbs the winner, up. well, the winner gets the briefcase and then goes on for the next year. Yeah. So thumbs up. No more spoilers. There you go. Um, we're going to have a uh, full WWE main event, or not main event, main event's already aired yes. on the uh, on the network, but full WWE SmackDown tapings coverage, we're going to have it up after we go off the air here tonight, probably about 10.30, 10.45 Eastern Time, we'll have it up on WZROnline.com and any of the other websites that you guys visit. Check out our live chat room. Traffic, i got to tell you tonight, man, traffic's awfully low. It is low. For our show and yeah. for... In general. Traffic in general. Yeah. Uh, WZROnline.com slash chat WZROnline.com slash chat get there lots and lots somebody in the chat room says uh, Smackdown is irrelevant save us 3MB I don't know if it's irrelevant so is 3MB. as their fact that or due to the fact that they're doing a Money in the Bank ladder match, and the winner gets a shot at the WWE World Heavyweight Title. I don't know what he means. Over the next year, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, but that's not going to happen on SmackDown. That's going to happen at Money in the Bank, the pay per view. SmackDown is irrelevant, and I know what he means in the sense that do you watch SmackDown every week? No. Do you still know what's going on in WWE just yes. fine? You don't need to watch SmackDown, therefore, it's not relevant. If you miss Raw, you're not going to know what's going on in a lot of different storylines and, and stuff like that. Okay. You can miss SmackDown, and, and, and as long as you watch Raw, you, you know what's going on. Okay. So Raw's good, relevant. Good point, Save Us. Yeah, and Save Us is right. SmackDown's not really relevant. and I, that's, st I stand corrected. There you go. I sit corrected, actually. I stand I sit corrected. You're sitting corrected. Right. But, uh, no, that's a good point that he's making in the sense that they need to make it a relevant show. Make it to where shit happens there where you have to watch SmackDown. There was a time... Where Raw and SmackDown were your two weekly visits on cable television for WWE programming, and right. you needed to watch both. Obviously, Raw has always been the bigger show, but I, right when the brand split oh, happened, Friday night they changed that. It used to be Thursday. I yeah, know. that was a different time. Yeah, like Impact, yeah. you can still watch if you want. Friday's kind of hard to give up a Friday night, exactly. but exactly. Well, when they first did that brand extension, and, and each crew, each show had its own crew, mm -hmm. and Paul Heyman was writing SmackDown for about a year there. SmackDown was considered the better show. They oh, had, no. they had right. Edge, mm -hmm. Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit. Yep. They had all the, the, the fun guys to watch do matches, the fun angles. Right. And then Raw had Triple H and The Undertaker and right. the established guys or whatever. Right. But SmackDown for a while was better. And now these must, days, must see TV. And now these days, it's not must see TV. Yeah. You know, know now it's right. a show that you can skip, and it's not really that detrimental. But I will say this: you're being a fan. I will say this: if SmackDown was on a Thursday night or a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night, I, I would wouldn't. watch it. I wouldn't. You wouldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. It would if it if would I was if it was, if it was live. live. I had to. If it was live, I might watch. Well, it depends. If it was live and they still treated it like the same show that it is now, right? I would learn through time that you don't need to watch this show. If they made it a show that I need to watch because mm -hmm. they do shit that 
just a quick recap on Raw is not going to get you the whole thing. Right. Then I would watch it, but they don't make it to where you need to. Like you said, it's not right. must see programming. You're right. And it used to be. All right. So they announced uh, that could uh, big in their television renegotiations. Too. I know. And SmackDown. If they, had, live. if they had two live shows a week that right. are must see destinations, they would have got more money. All right. Uh, so they announced uh, via mobile <coughs> alert yesterday afternoon, correct, that uh, the yeah. authority yeah. was going to open up Monday Night Raw, and they correct. had a, a message for the entire the WWE entire roster. roster. Yeah. So we open up Raw. The entire roster yes. is up on the stage there. The basic um, announcements were that there's going to be a battle royal. I like royal. that they didn't have Bray Wyatt out there. And they kept uh, somebody else, too. Who was it? Uh, it was Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family. And, uh, no, the Wyatt. Rowan Harper was out there. Oh, were they? Yeah, I, I saw them. Maybe Bray was too. Then I know Rowan Harper. But Bray there. was out there, man. I don't know if he was either. I know I saw Harper. And was Rowan. Rusev? Rusev was out Rusev there. was out right. there. Uh, um, Cena was out there because they dressed Cena him was, individually. Cena was right front and center yeah. with uh, Seth Rollins. Was Reigns and Ambrose out there? I don't think they were out there. Ah, they weren't out there. Those You're right. Weren't out You're there. right. You're right. And then we really need to talk about that because I don't think the Shield exists anymore. The Shield was nowhere. I've got they, a column half written that I got to get written and put on the rest of the news. Well, Rowan's and Ambrose never right. Reigns and Ambrose. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? You said Rones. Rones. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rones and Ambrose. Oh, Rains uh, and Ambrose. Yeah, I mean, and Ambrose has his own music now. Right. And they right. weren't together. They had separate storylines all night. Ambrose right. is gonna, obviously going to be working Rollins at Money in the Bank. Reigns is in the title match. Right. So right. it seems like the Shield's done. Mm-hmm. You know, which is kind of risky because Reigns doing that comedy shtick all night with Vicky Guerrero. Right. All right. Didn't scream main eventer to me, man. I know. It I didn't know. scream in a minute to me. Yeah, that's a bad way to launch a guy in his first you know what, though? His first singles push ever. And he's joking with Vicky Guerrero and trying to get into a battle royal. I mean, ultimately, it's worked out to where I he got added to a match to where if he wins, he's got a shot at the title. And that all worked out fine. Now, where they go from here is questionable because he doesn't have Ambrose to Hold talk. on a minute. Hold he on. He doesn't have Ambrose to talk for him anymore. Right. Doesn't have Rollins to talk for him anymore. He's on his own. Is he ready to be on his own? That is my question. I will say this. That is my question. I will say this, and I will let me see. <laughs> let me see how things go down on Monday Night Raw next week. The Go Home Show. I would not rule it out. And listen, I completely. If they go this route, Roman Reigns is not ready. Roman Reigns. We got smoking is, yet. You is can not, Is not ready to be WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He's he's not ready. He's not ready on the microphone. Is he ready? He's, just, he's not ready. Is he ready to be in a position where he has a shot and loses his first shot at the WWE title, too? Should he be losing his first opportunity? I, to, if you're going to push him as a singles guy, here's his first chance, and he loses his first chance. Is that good, too? Right now, I'll say this. I'll say this. Come Money in the Bank, we've heard that Rowan and Harper are expected to take tag team titles. Yeah. That was the plan. So you think Bray's taking the strap? So I think it may be a clean sweep. At Money in the Bank, happen. where Bray takes the strap. Now, if that doesn't happen, there are two other people in the Raw Money in the Bank match that you would have to assume... Cena and Reigns. Cena and Reigns. Now, so, there's a third that you're Bray, not considering, and you know why? Cesaro? It sounds retarded. I know what it is. It Let sounds, me say that. Let me say you're what right. It you're already there, yes. Let me say Cesaro what it is. Cesaro is the guy. It is Cesaro, and, it sounds and it's due to this. And but, it's due to this. why is it? It's due to this, because Paul Heyman... Correct. ...came out... Correct. Paul Heyman you got came it. out. You got it. And if you guys remember, at WrestleMania, before WrestleMania 30, Paul Heyman yes. cut a promo and he said, I'm giving you a spoiler. Ding, 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 I'm ding, giving ding, you ding. a spoiler. Brock Lesnar is going to become, w- or is, is going to defeat the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania. Guess what? Brock Lesnar defeated the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania. And he's never let us forget it. Last night on Raw, Paul Heyman. He was asked for his prediction by Renee Young. That's not and on he Raw. He said, "I don't have a prediction." I got a spoiler. Paul Heyman once again mentioned the word spoiler last night. And if you remember back, like I just said, Brock Lesnar. Is he gonna put spoiler, his credibility on the line? Nobody believed him. Uh, he wants to be a major. If he says something, you believe it. Nobody That's his believed. character. Now, he's not going to go out on the ledge and give a spoiler, which right. is basically to say if you went into a fucking time machine and fast-forwarded to the night after money in the bank, Cesaro's the guaranteed winner because yep. he's already told you who the result of the show that hasn't happened yet. That's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. He said it and nobody really? believed. Nobody really believed makes you have to consider Cesaro. When Paul Heyman 
said that it's crazy that, as it seems when Paul Heyman revealed a spoiler that Brock Lesnar was going to defeat the Undertaker to break the streak, nobody believed him. Brock Lesnar's now giving you another spoiler. <laughs> no, Heyman's Cesaro, giving you another spoiler. Or, or Paul Heyman's yeah, yeah, giving yeah. you another spoiler that Cesaro. Can you imagine? I'm glad you picked up on that, sir. Can you imagine? Yeah, man. The Paul Heyman Listen. Promo? Is as far fetched as it seems, Cesaro is going to be the WWE World Heavyweight Champ, the undisputed number one guy with the titles to prove it in the company. The way he's anybody been, the way Rock he's going to break the streak, the way he's been pushed since becoming a Paul Heyman guy, the way he's been pushed since leaving the Real American right. is not indicative of that guy carrying the strap of the company. But Paul Heyman made it interesting, and he knew he what he did. was doing. It's, uh, it's not, not scheduled, and it's not planned, and it's not part of the script or whatever. It's right. not part of their plans. If they're not really giving Cesaro the title, Heyman did a great thing because right. he got that spoiler g- gimmick over, and he mentioned, like you said in an interview when he said the word spoiler, I told you when Brock won it was a spoiler, I'm telling you now it's a spoiler. Right. That really makes you, you have to consider it. you got to consider it. As crazy as it seems, you got to consider, gotta it. consider it. I know. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's going on? I love you too, brother. What's cracking? Boom. you got to fix this. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on. Hold on one second, okay, brother? we gotta, we got to fix the uh, the phone lines. Give us, give us one second, bro. It's coming. Oh, through. I hit exit. I oh, clicked the button. As as it's it's coming through the. Uh, Sir, please call back. I apologize. I know. I know. It's, it's not. I didn't know what you were saying until. Um. Hey. Oh shit! I need somebody to be talking to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever, whoever just called, call us back, yeah, man. That's, that's our our apologies for that. We cut you off uh, accidentally. Wait, we can hear you, but the the people listening to the uh, the live stream, they uh, they can't hear you guys. So we just uh, we need to call back real quick. We apologize. No, we had it right. If you guys want to call, it's uh, 518-712-3070. Here he is. Here he is. All right. My yes. apologies, sir. Welcome back. <laughs> Let's try it again. I call once a year and you cut me off. I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. I screwed up. I apologize. What's on your mind? What's up, man? All right. The second call this year with a prediction that is always wrong, but I, it's, it would be great if the WWE would pull this off. I don't see Roman Reigns being in this match at all, and I gotta predict that the winner of the ladder match at Money of in the Bank and the new WWE champion will be am I the only guy who sees this coming? Daniel Bryan. Oh, uh, you know, I, I mean listen, I listen. I've pondered that it's not I'll tell you why I don't think it's logical. You go ahead. You, you go, go ahead. Well, I'm I'm gonna say I mean, listen, you've already got six guys in the match, right? I mean that's that's what they're going with. Daniel Bryan from from all the, the reports that have come out, man, uh, he's not He's not healing not nearly as fast as they thought he was. I mean, there was talk he's last week. He's not healing at all. He's getting worse. Yeah, there was talk last week that he had numbing in his left arm, and that was not an angle. Weakness. That was not a work uh, weakness, yeah, numbness. Weaker instead of stronger. In his in his arm, dude. So I mean, I, I mean, who's to say that it couldn't happen? And and then they go that route and and have him back. Even if he can't wrestle for another month or something like that, he could come back at the come come out at the very end. You know, kind of steal the title and do an angle like that, but. All the reports from WWE are that he is not in good shape. It's very logical. If he was able to do anything, they would not have taken the title off of him in the first place to put on the line in the ladder match for him to come and just take right back. They wouldn't have done all that. They, 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 They just united these titles. They've only had two guys, Orton and now Bryan. Bryan didn't even really get to have a run or defend it. He had the one match with Kane. And then, boom, he can't compete. Neck injury, they take the titles. Before they took the titles, they said payback. You have an ultimatum. Your wife quits or gets fired or whatever the fuck, or you give us your titles and say you can't compete. That's they true. fired her. They fully thought he was going to be ready by Money in the Bank. Because he wasn't, they had no choice because now it's like, well, if he's not ready by Money in the Bank, they're saying he might not even be ready by SummerSlam, let alone Battleground, which You're is right. in between. You're right. We have to take these belts. They're not going to do all of that if he's just going to come in uh, in two weeks on Sunday night and right. take them right back. That would be yeah. really worthless to do all that. Right. The, the the like Boone said, the fact that they did all of that stuff with the hope, you know, and the knowledge, that, like you said, of his condition getting worse, he right. physically can't do it unless he's ready by battleground to defend. Because right. they could stall for four weeks of TV, but they can't stall. And then you go to the pay per view, and he still can't defend it two pay per views later. 
It's it's a good scenario that you bring up, man. But I I just I mean, hey, never say never. You know no, what I well, mean in this business. But all the reports and, and like Boone said, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have tried to you know postpone it and postpone it and and go with this angle and well, all. You know. Before we let them go, an idea that I thought was cool, and I know they can't do it for the same reasons I just said, but a really cool idea would be there's two titles hanging above that ring. That's have true. Daniel Bryan come out and grab one of them. The winner gets the other, and then Brian, when he comes back from injury, there says, you go. yo, I got my belt. I never lost it in the ring. You there know? you go. Uh, like but they obviously are not going to do that for the same reason I just said, but it would be a cool angle, just like Razor and Sean with the IC titles in the 90s. Right. When, right. Uh, when Sean lost his smile or whatever the fuck. But uh, when he came back, it's a natural rivalry. Hey, who's the real champ? You know what I mean? I got a right. belt. You got a belt. Let's see who the real guy is. You know. But they're not doing that. Thanks for the call, brother. Appreciate it, man. All right. Um, if you guys want to call, it's five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero. We got about a half an hour left. So listen, the authority came out basically to to open raw, and they say that you know they told us all along we need a fighting champion, somebody that can defend the title. They threw out the B plus player player the bullshit. The B plus player, right? Yeah, and they one. said uh, you know uh, there's going to be a battle royal tonight, right? Yeah. Battle Royal match tonight, and uh, for the chance to enter the Money in the Bank ladder match, but John Cena and Kane are going to be in a stretcher match as well. So we're going to have a Battle Royal and John Cena and Kane in a stretcher match later tonight. By the way, in the Battle Royal, there are a couple of names that aren't going to be involved, and those are Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and then we did yes. an angle later in the night to address that. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's going on? Yeah, just uh, two quick questions. Um, first one, it, you hear me? Yeah, yes. what's up, man? Okay, uh, the first well, one Cali. is, uh, you know, when last you're trying to do wrestling and MMA, do you ever see Dana White giving him a shot in UFC like he did Brock Lesnar, you think? You, you talking about Daniel Bryan and, going to UFC? No, no, no. No, no, I'm not talking about Bobby Lashley with TNA. You know, he's an MMA and wrestling and everything. He's not, he's so not he good enough. Did, he, He's, but you, 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 you're talking about, wait a minute, you're talking about Bobby Lashley possibly going to what, UFC? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, no, that's not going to happen. I mean, he's fought, or what? he's fought a couple of times in MMA. I mean, he was fighting for strike force. We saw him, and he's just not, he's not good enough. And Dana only let Brock in. The only reason that Brock thing happened was because Brock had the NCAA uh, credential. Without that credential, no matter how big of a star he is, how good of an amateur wrestler he is, how cool his look is, how marketable he is, if he didn't have that legitimacy, you don't just step into the big leagues like that. And he only had one fight when he came in. Lashley's got four or five, whatever yeah. he's got. But it's just clear if you watch Lashley's fights, he's just not good enough. He's just And he's getting older, and, he, and he's so gassed up. and He's just not, it's not the mm -hmm. same as Brock. It's just not the same. Makes sense. Makes sense. And one last question. You know what other releases WWE did? Will they ever go some nuts, Miss McMahon, and maybe release the Punk? Or what? Fucking. Who said Hunter, Hunter what? I said, will he ever, will other releases WWE has did, will Miss McMahon ever release CM Punk? I cut him permanently from WWE. You know, the, the CM Punk <laughs> deal, uh, geez, man, with, with WWE, I mean, listen. <clears throat> Uh, a similar thing just recently happened with Rey Mysterio, where Rey Mysterio was under contract. His contract was coming was to an end. One, yeah. Right. His contract was coming to an end, and Vince McMahon decided, no, we're going to sign him to one more year because we feel that he owes us time due to all the injuries that he suffered uh, while he's been here and under contract. So they re signed him, and Rey wasn't all that happy. About so a little more complicated design. than that, but that's, the gist. Oh, that's basically the gist it's like, well, you, your deal's up, but as far as I'm concerned, we don't even have to offer an extension or, or don't have to offer a new deal. You owe us time, you owe us time. So that same deal rolls over, right. which is not right. legally binding at all. But I think they've ironed it out to where he's going to take a similar deal. Something it could be, it's going to be more non wrestling stuff. Uh, and, and now with CM Punk, I mean, CM Punk walked out with what six months or, or so left on his, on his WWE deal, I believe it's July. Uh, which expires shortly. So yep. could WWE take the same approach with him and basically say, well, listen, you kind of owe us six months as, as you walk out? But 
it's not it, yeah, it, legally it, that doesn't work it's but there were there would be legal issues and everything else like Boone said that's like a homeboy like no uh, you owe me man you know you owe me man right. in court doesn't, there is no come on man it's no when, you're, when your contract paper expires says, yeah. you are out so as far as CM Punk it's it's probably not going to happen I mean I would say 99% when CM Punk's yeah, contract tough. expires he is he is done it's over with and, he and got married gonna, by the way they're going to talk about that really that's quick that's right he, yeah. uh, he got married last Friday it happened during the afternoon hours on uh, on Friday yeah. married AJ Lee it was a private wedding ceremony was it in Chicago? Uh, somewhere outside of Chicago okay. just outside of in, Chicago in Illinois, so. AJ Lee recently recently moved to Chicago to be she closer moved in with them, I thought. to be closer to CM Punk. Oh, right? okay. I thought they I thought they moved in together. I think they lived Well they're together. married now they have to be. I, I yeah, would yeah, guess yeah, that yeah. they live together. But AJ moved to uh, Chicago and then they had the uh, the wedding ceremony. She's so fucking hot. Uh, when she'll be mm. back, there are some people within Dare that ass, company bro. there are some people within that company that question whether AJ mm. Lee's gonna be back or not. But what we'll is interesting see. she's been gone this long. We'll have to uh, we're gonna have to wait and see. I think there's gonna be some further updates coming on AJ Lee, but there are some people that that kind of doubt that she may even return. Well, you were talking to that one guy. He said Wednesday, Wednesday would have something for you. Right, right. Wednesday will have right. something. We'll see what happens. All right, uh, what else happened on uh, on Raw, dude? We had uh, Dolph Ziggler and uh, and Seth Rollins. They had a really good match. Yeah, on, uh, that was a rematch from SmackDown, I believe. But uh, Raw, Yeah, and they were in uh, Cleveland, which is Ziggler's sort of kind of hometown. They always bill Ziggler from Hollywood, Florida, I believe it is. And last we've night we've been to said, Hollywood, Florida. We've been to Hollywood. We parted at that porn convention. We did at that yeah. big porn. I but just they always, talking to my old boss again, Brian. They always House, they always bill him facilitator. Yeah, yeah, they always bill him from from Hollywood, Florida. And last night it was like, please welcome Cleveland's own. Do they always say Hollywood, Florida? Yeah. I've never noticed that. But uh, yeah. no, well, I remember the one Cleveland's time when they, they were in Cleveland not so long ago, and they had him and the Miz do something together. Uh, they went to, uh, I know photos came out there, were in an NFL or NHL, NFL Yeah, no, games. but that too, but even on the show itself, they did something Cleveland-based with him and the Miz. Right, right. So he's been built from Cleveland before, or at least right in that area, yeah. But anyways, like you said, good match, a lot of good crowd reactions. What did you think of, uh, well, we'll take one phone call and then we'll get back into it. Uh, Caller, you're live on WZITV, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey, um, two quick things. Um, first, yeah, about the whole um, Shield thing. Like, um, do you guys feel like, so they had Seth Rollins do the big, the double cross, like this, this huge thing, and then the following week they come out, they're all pissed off about it, and they're saying, all right, you know, we're going to, you know, you're dead and this and that. And then now last night, they're just, okay, they're doing their own thing. Like, 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 yeah. Dean Ambrose is, is, there was no build up like, okay, the shield is, is it's just like now all, all of a sudden they're, they're, they're not together. Like, I feel like maybe give it a few more weeks where they like get their hands on Seth and then say, okay, now that's done. Now we can go our separate. It was just like, okay, now you had one week where you got on the mic and said, oh, you know, we're going to get you and stuff like that. And now it's only Dean Ambrose. And it's just, I mean, I just feel like, there was no, like, explanation. It's you're, just like, okay, now it happened. Like, what do you guys think? You're exactly right. I mean, you just put it perfectly. I mean, that's exactly the, the situation. It's last week is the first week where we address why did Seth Rollins turn, what the hell's going on here, this and that. And Reigns and Ambrose seem united. They're in the same reign. They come out to the same music at the same time. Uh, and they address the same situation. And they're involved in the same match later in the night. Uh, and then a week later, like you said, this week it's Dean Ambrose has his own theme music. Uh, he's the only guy that's worried about Rollins anymore. Reigns doesn't seem to give a shit. He's more worried about getting in the title match. Uh, I mean, we teased it earlier, and I guess we'll talk about it when we get into that point at Raw, but like you said, it seems like there is no more shield. I mean, it's just... It's Reigns and Ambrose are on their own now. Rollins is doing his thing. It's just well, so let's talk here about we go. That. Let's Look, see what these guys do. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, anything you, you else? Can, you can keep the color on the line while we talk about okay, it. Okay, yeah. Want. But uh, Roman Reigns. So, what did you think of the uh, the segment backstage? I mean, basically, Vicky Guerrero. Yeah, a couple of them. Vicky Guerrero is going to be leaving WWE uh, probably as soon as next week. I mean, the whole storyline. Uh, it's going to lead that. you. Yeah. It's going to lead to the authority getting pissed off at Vicky for sneezing and spilling drinks and everything else. Fucking up. Uh, yeah. Fucking up. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, they're going to fire her. She's going to get a degree in, uh, in college. Um, what, but, does it, what does it tell you, though, when she's, she, we had the report with the story coming around WrestleMania, she was going to quit, she was going to yeah. go to college, 
And they ask her, no, can you stay around so we can write you off of TV? And then the way they write her off is, yo, we're going to fucking throw vomit all over your face and make you do stupid shit and sneeze, and, and then you're fired on TV. Like, can I, can we I asked you to stay around for that. Like, that's just, why we, do that to a person? We why put, would you do that? We put it up on the website today, and it gets even worse than that. All as, right, what uh, is it? You guys know that Shaw Guerrero, uh, Vicky Guerrero's daughter, yeah. had Raquel Diaz. Right, right, had been released from NXT. Uh, she t- took some time off. Yeah, uh, due she to quit a, once, came back, and they got released. due to a, due to a personal matter. Uh, we never found out what that personal matter is. Now we know that Shaw uh, had an eating disorder. Um, Believe. Where it was an Duke eating it? disorder where she would go and she would oh, throw up. Oh, fuck me. So the Vicky thing. Oh. Where, where she would she would eat food and then throw it up. Oh, man. I didn't hear this people. story yet. It came out today. Wow. Put it up on the website. So That's in addition, up. In addition to WWE asking Vicky Guerrero to stick around... The so way that they're going, TV. so that they can write her off TV with an angle, and of oh course they've God. always. It's like Jim Ross; they always make fun of Jr. Yeah. Time and time Everyone's again. Bischoff got fired. Um, threw him in the dumpster. The trash. <coughs> right. Yeah. And and Vicky Guerrero with the whole write off on TV, and then they have the puke last night where Stephanie's over a toilet and she winds up puking. Uh, Vicky's real life daughter and and Vicky and Eddie's real life daughter would basically eat food and then puke yeah, it up she as bulimic. she felt right. Uh, and then so they, they have Stephanie, oh, and then they have man. Stephanie over a toilet last night puking over the mother Vicky Guerrero. That's so it's up. even it it, it 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 you take it one step further, and then the week before it's just that unnecessarily fucking the rude. week before that it's very well known in WWE, and we haven't put this up on the website yet, but Vince McMahon hates sneezing. I don't know what it I is. Do. I, do. I don't know what you it want is. The story? What is the story? Be- why does Vince McMahon hate sneezing? Is it germs? He is hates, he a germaphobe? He hates yawning too. Yawning and sneezing. Anything he can't control. Okay. He can't stand. Paul Heyman's told the story. Is that a what it is? Interviews. If okay. He sneezes. He'll be in an interview. Heyman said. Heyman, Heyman has said this. Heyman's right. told the story twice that I've heard it. Once on okay. a DVD. Once on Austin's podcast recently. But it, okay. Heyman tells the story. He's in a meeting, and they're in a really they're engrossed in a really fucking heated discussion. This and that. This and that. Hachoo! Right. Son of a. Yeah, Vince got flipped out, right? Vince gets all right. mad, and basically the reason why is, I should have been able to control that. I can't believe I wasn't able to stop myself Vince from doing can't that. Vince control it. He doesn't right. like involuntary. He doesn't like anything he can't control. Everybody's right. always said Vince lives in his own universe. Right. He's the god of that universe. He controls it. He's the he's the god you, of his own personal created universe that he created. And the, this, WWE, the WWE Universe, thus the name WWE Universe, and in this universe where he's God and he controls everything, if right. he can't control something like a sneeze or yawning, he fucking flips out. And so this, that this was built is, into this it too. is coming from Paul Heyman, who was in a creative meeting with Vince when this happened. So oh. you know it's not just a report out of the backstage area where you yeah, can't. Yeah, he said, she this said. This is, is Paul, Paul Heyman saying, saying confirming. So the week before, when they had Vicky Guerrero sneeze. On Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, that was she did some it last sort night too. of thing. She did it last night with the sneezing. It's a where Vince, recurring theme. The where sneezing. Vince can't yeah. stand sneezing. So you bring all of this in where Vince hates sneezing. The sneezing's okay. The mocking the bulimia. But the, the mocking kids, the, the bulimia. Eating disorder, that's and, fucking and up. everything else. And this is, and not only that, but Are all of this, all of this comes around. And you're asking. This is, you've asked, Vicky Guerrero has said to yeah. you, okay, I'll stick around. You guys can write me off TV. Yeah. And granted, Vicky's the type of... I mean, you can tell she's the type of woman well, listen, her that whole, goes around with what, whatever is offered to her. Exactly. She her does, whole run was, yo, does. I'm going to... Like, every guy that dealt with her on TV in the storyline, the whole gimmick was, right. I'm going to pretend like I'm attracted to you because you're the boss. Right. And the whole joke was, God, this chick is ugly and I'm pretending to think she's pretty to get a championship match or to get a push or whatever. That was the whole right. gimmick she had on TV was Edge would pretend to like her. Fucking this guy would pretend to like her. Like they had her, oink, they had her oinking like a pig at, yeah. at one point. You know all this. And, and this Vicky is Guerrero. The de- this is the widow so, of a dead superstar, right? And you're keeping her on. How the, do you think Eddie would react? On the react payroll, to- they're keeping her on the payroll just to like, oh, we're helping the family, giving her a paycheck. You're humiliating how, how do you think? the shit out but of her. But then WWE hey, here's a couple bucks. Kid. WWE's Thanks response to that spot. would be like, well, it's sports entertainment. We're yeah, you know, we're having sports, fun. We're just having some fun. This, that, and the other. No, they're embarrassing her in yes. front of millions. And not only that, but somebody in the chat. Dino brought it up as different. 
in a different scenario, but Vicky Guerrero is a class act where she has agreed to stick around she's with doing the right thing. She's doing the right thing. You need to write me she's, off, yes, sir. Yeah. She's agreed to stick around. She's doing whatever's asked, and the way that they they say this that, is how she's the way, paid. Thank you, thank you for sticking yeah. around. Thank you. This is the way they repay her by number one, mocking your daughter's bulimia. Number two, oh. you're fired in front of millions of people. Number three, well, have no, you're puke. humiliated before you're right. fired. Obviously, Humiliate. you're fired, but let's fucking puke, puke all over the shit Listen, out of her it's, first, it's and then fire. Unbelievable her. what they do to this poor like the woman. The Bischoff one, you and, can and, understand. He had the heat right. with Bischoff from the Monday Night Wars. We're gonna fire him and throw him in a trash truck where he's begging for his job. We throw him in the trash truck and he goes away with the trash because he's it. trash. Right. That one makes That's sense. That's one thing. Okay. Jim Ross even had his own history with Vince, this and that. So when they fuck with. Vicky Guerrero, what did she ever do? Like, maybe there's something right. I don't know, but did she ever do something to piss them off personally? Like, why do they have such a personal thing where they need to fucking humiliate her? John Morgan says That's just Eddie, the way they do business. John Morgan says Eddie would be rolling in his grave, and, and Shop Tall Man Absolutely. agrees. Absolutely. Absolutely he would. Absolutely, you know? Anything else, call it before we let you go, bro? Oh, yeah, hey, uh, just one other thing. Um, what did you guys think in the Battle Royal last night? Um... Bo Dallas was one of like the final people in there. I thought that was pretty cool, and I thought yeah. it was cool to see Rusev and Reigns going at it. We finally get to see him when he's in there against the big guy. I like him, but when he comes out and does against these jobbers, I thought it was cool to see him in there and 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 really going at going at it with with Reigns. I'm starting to Crap to up, like him, and I, I like the Bo Dallas thing too that he was in there for so long. The Bo Dallas, thanks for the call, by the way. The Bo Dallas thing Thanks. wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, they did leave him in towards the end, but it didn't really seem like that was, like, a big deal. The, the Rusev was obviously done by design. The last two guys standing are the big, you know, Reigns and Rusev, the big boys. And, and the, big guys, and the right. cool thing I like is that it's like Rusev's graduation. Royal Rumble, he made a statement in the Rumble, if you remember, Rusev did. Reigns, yeah. the Royal Rumble was the Roman Reigns show that, that Batiste ultimately right. won and Daniel Bryan ultimately ruined because the fans right. won him in it. So oh, remember it came well, out Rusev, the Roman Reigns too? Same thing. Yeah, you but know? no, Rusev had his moments where he was eliminating globs of people and right. it took a bunch of people to eliminate him and we didn't even know who the fuck he was yet, the main right. roster casual fans. Mm -hmm. So then the next time he's in a battle royal was last night and he's the last guy standing with him and Reigns. And it's like he's given this up and coming breakout superstar a run for his money, and he's right. brand new. It's a nice booking. How big did the crowd pop for that too? The Roman Reigns Rusev. That, you know, was that they, initial they were stare down when it was like, "Yo, these yeah. are the last two guys." The crowd was really hot. They for popped. It. That's the cool too. thing about battle royals when you have those moments like that. Right, and they always, you know, it comes down to the. It's normally two big guys, right? Like Big Show and or Ali, top or something stars. like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Some, uh, yeah, or or two top yeah. stars. That have there's usually a spot in where if there's a big fucker like a big giant, then like the right. whole ring has to eliminate him by the, you know together. Right, all right. And that's how they explain that fucker going. But real the quick, last two guys are the guys. Real quick, back to Raw. We had Dean Ambrose and Bad News Barrett. They had a, uh, a pretty good match on, uh, on Raw good last match. night. We yeah, talked yeah. about you know the whole spike in the coffee thing with Roman Reigns. I mean we've we've already yeah, ran yeah, that yeah. down. Sheamus and Bray Wyatt. Uh, they had a, a pretty hard pretty damn good match, match too. Yeah, right. Sheamus I mean, has really been. And, and Barrett and Sheamus, the match you talk about it every week, bro. Uh, I'm not a big Sheamus fan, but week after week, I'm yeah, becoming well, a fan of his in-ring yeah. work. Like, his matches, you can almost sit back and say, this is going to be good. Right. Because right. it's going to be hard-hitting. Like, JBL always gets fired up for him, too, on commentary, because he right. knows it's JBL style when he was yeah. a worker. He was the stiff, rugged, fucking, I'm going to hit you, hit me back. It's like the APA, the accolades, him and Ron Simmons. How good is JBL on commentary, too, bro? He can take anything all right jerry lawler and we can and argue Michael anything Cole, they will they will call him out on something and jbl is completely wrong he's always right? got an answer though but he's always got an answer and it always kind of makes got sense an answer for you. storyline wise it always at least he's, he's got always he's got, got, got an argument and right anytime he's just so good dude. anytime he's disagreeing with something he's, he's so got good. his i'm a heel and even though this is wrong i believe it I because believe i believe it, it. <laughs> yeah, you think that you know you know what i mean he is so good man um, well, they did the Vicky stuff backstage. We already talked about it. I mean, Roman Reigns Thunder, basically... Thunder Reigns was trying to get into the Rumble. Romans wanted to or get into the Rumble. Rumble. Exactly. So we figured, all right, I'll spike the, the coffee, this, that, and the other yes. thing. Uh, Rusev uh, defeated Heath Slater. Three MBs, only one guy yeah. now, right? American yeah. rock star. He's no longer... Like a Drew McIntyre's released. He's not a one-man band. He's an American rock star now. Is that what it is? American That's what he called himself. But right. I think he's going to be the American fired guy. In like Drew McIntyre thought I had thought he had all the potential in the world, brother. And uh, what do you got, Harper? 
a little of that. I think the hiccups are coming. You got some heartburn there, bro. The hiccups are coming. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> all right, what was your... Drew McIntyre's release, dude. That oh, was that, one, that one was... That one was uh, surprising. The Brodus Clay one was surprising. The Evan Bourne was surprising. Teddy Long's contract Teddy Long expired. made sense. Evan Bourne never really got a shot. Uh, he but was he, injured. Because he's know. so talented, I thought it was surprising. Like, yo, this guy's that good, and you can't find something. I think we'll see Matt. Oh, Evan Bourne's been out with injury, bro. I know, but he's ready to he's be back. He's cleared your right. He's been right. hyping it up on Twitter, and then they just yeah. released him. But I'm just, my point being, a guy that good, and they can't right. find something, like go right. train the NXT guys, or let's put a mask on you, call you Sin Cara 3. You know what shocked something me? Something good. Yoshi Tatsu had very good reviews down in NXT. He had good ties to the NXT training. Right. Yeah, a lot of people like were, working with him. A lot of people were really happy with his work, so that was kind of surprising. But Evan he's Bourne, older, and, he, and like I said, because he came in from Japan where he was a star somewhat yeah. when he came, he might have been like... Not the typical jobber salary. He might have got a true. couple of bucks. Yeah, you know they probably mean? were paying him good money. Not great money, I but think, like uh, more than a typical jobber. So it's like, yo, well, we're cutting. This was all done not because they needed to get rid of guys. Right. It was done to save Budget money. Rates. Right. Because of the WWE Network upstart costs. They're cost trying money. to cut twenty million dollars. Yeah. Well, bro. because they're projected to lose forty-eight to fifty, I something know, like fifty million, roughly. Yeah. Uh, because of the network and the and the, and the TV revenue and all right. that stuff. But uh, so yeah, they're trying to make cost cutting stuff so they need to get rid of guys that actually make money that's why right. when a lot of people said why didn't they just get rid of a bunch of the NXT guys that are over age or something mm -hmm. like they did with Mason Ryan and those guys not too long ago right why yeah. not just cut a bunch of the fat in NXT like why main roster guys well A they're not being used mm -hmm. B they cost more than the NXT guys and that's really it B they cost right. more than the NXT guys right and we're freeing up money I think uh, Evan Bourne's going to be back uh, Matt Seidel in uh, Ring of Honor. We'll see what happens. I think it, Ring of Honor is a great place for him. I think that opens up a lot of cool. I think Ring yeah. of Honor is about to get real interesting. I think so. AJ I Styles, so. Frankie Kazarian, Christopher, Christopher Daniels, Daniels, Evan Bourne now. Right. God forbid CM Punk ever did something oh, crazy. Man. Uh, you know. Ever did something you know. crazy and said, yo, I'm a big fucking star. Ring I'm of Honor's a big got, deal. Ring of Honor's got all these great guys. Like if Samoa Joe's contract comes up and Joe goes back. Like, hold yo, on a That whole core base of not only that, Brian Danielson. But for CM Punk, we know that he's got money saved up. So for CM Punk, yeah. don't be about the money. Don't nah, be about, the, be about wait, the money. Wait a minute. Wait, don't he's be at about the, the age money. where he's got to make that money. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But I think that he would go to Ring of Honor and say, you know what? WWE pissed me the fuck off. Pay me more than any other member of the roster. But I'm not going to tell you I want millions of dollars or I want hundreds of thousands of dollars. Book me on a, on a per show and, and go, no, in there, your, go in there and, and give them a, a low offer that there Ring of Honor no, can afford. There's no credibility. There's not enough credibility in the world. Or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever. Uh, humbleness, whatever. For a guy ah. who's in CM Punk's position where he's not just a guy in WWE. He's a top star in WWE. You're talking, you about, you're talking about millions of dollars. Ah. If the guy's going to go get body slammed on wood and break his fucking body up, He's not going to not take the millions because, oh, I'm going to show them. I'm going to go to my hardcore fans. He is so he's angry. You know that he's pissed off at WWE. What better way than to get back at WWE, who he can't stand? It wouldn't we anything. know that CM Punk can't stand WWE. He doesn't agree with the PG product. He doesn't agree with Vince McMahon's ways. What better way than to get back at WWE? I don't know if he's with the PG product, by the way. His right. character is straight what, edge. What mm -hmm. better way than to get back? At WWE, a company that he is pissed off at, than to go to Ring of Honor at a at a low ball rate. First of all, what better way you go to TNA because that's their actual competition uh, number two, as but, we were talking about earlier, uh, as things stand know. now. Right. It's last, just never last phone call for tonight. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? Hey, how how's it going, fellas? It is going good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, I want to get I want to get your guys' thoughts on something. Uh, with the Hardy Boys uh, uh, getting back together and Team 3D getting inducted into the Hall, uh, what do you guys think about uh, a, a triple threat, Monsters Ball, or maybe like a ladder match involving the Wolves? The Wolves with the Dudleys in uh, Team Three or uh, Team I like Three D and the Hardys. I like it. You know, we talked about yeah. it earlier. I talked about it earlier with uh, the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys both being back now in TNA. You throw in a, a young tag team like the Wolves and and kind of use the Dudleys yeah, and the Hardys to put them over a little bit. I I like it. Hey, I, no, I like it. 
Well, they do it, no, because they had Kazarian and Daniels, or I know, a really established tag team, and all you had to do was do Kazarian Daniels, bad influence, bad influence versus the Wolves. That was a dream match for wrestling fans of that type, right? That die hard. They didn't do right. it, they, and they've been doing jack shit with the Wolves since they've come right. in. They're not going to put them in a position where, hey, we got the Hardys and the Dudleys back. Let's try and elevate the Wolves out of this. If right. they wanted to do anything with the Wolves, they would have done something by now. I mean, they gave them the straps, but they didn't really. They did it in a bullshit way, and then you know gave it back. We'll they see. just they don't they don't care enough about the Wolves to really to utilize that kind of opportunity. Oh shit, the Hardys right. are back. Team Hardys, right. you know. All right, thanks for the call, bro. Appreciate it. All right, uh, to finish up, Raw, what do you think of Stardust on uh, Raw? Cody Rhodes comes in, I he's mean, Stardust, he's got the whole gold dust gimmick. Yeah, what do you think? If they're going to run with him as a tag team for a while, that's something to do, I guess. I, I think it's to further the eventual Cody Rhodes gold dust. I don't think there's been any changes in that. I think this is just an opportunity where they can play this out a little bit longer no, until absolutely. SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah. No, it absolutely could be I an think, extended, and then right. we get the real thing with those two. It's going to happen at SummerSlam. Either Slam. way, there's always a chance that the Stardust thing will take off. Or they'll just it like could it. Take off. They'll right. just like yeah. it for some reason. Ah, we got both Dusty's kids dressed up in gold paint like weirdos. Right. Right. Ah, right. Dusty. Stardust is uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes' is, uh, old nickname. Correct. Second nickname he went, from back That was one of his monikers. Okay. Yeah, I don't. It wasn't like a monikers. name he was known by. Or, all really, right. not really. And then the uh, the main event of uh, of Monday Night Raw it was uh, uh, who was it? John Cena, and it was the uh, Money in the Bank qualifier. stretcher match. Stretcher match. Yeah, John Kane Cena, Kane. Uh, you know, they had the line up on the stage, right? And John Cena, yeah. of course, Super Cena, winds up pushing yes. Kane over, and that was that. Was All right, that, yeah. let's do rapid fire. You ready? We got five Turn minutes to do. Over. We got five minutes to do rapid fire. Anthony Remy, JTG on WZR. I'm going to talk to uh, Shad Gaspard. It's my boy. And to our list that. of guests we'll never have on here that he promised. Shut the fuck up. Stephen Grabank says, Yeah, hey, you get your t shirt in a couple weeks, Anthony. Remy, by the way. No, he, he, got got he got his shirt. You got an extra couple to it. I'm gonna get these guests done. Steven, yeah. Now you make me feel bad. Stephen Grubay, I'm looking forward to talking to Rip So feel and, bad. and yeah. <laughs> Which of the recent WWE releases shock you the most is Stephen Grubay? There's a good question because we didn't I'm really say McIntyre. We didn't man. really get into it. McIntyre is the most promising name in the sense that is he better than Evan Born in the Ring? No, but he's Probably bigger. Evan. He's bigger. He's got a better look, and he had. Out of all those guys, who had the most chance? If WWE, if this WWE looked at these eleven guys and said, right. "We have to take one of these guys and really push him to the moon," mm. the guy they would pick would probably be Drew McIntyre. So in that Pretty sense, true. he's the most shocking, the most talented. Probably Evan, Evan Bourne. Bourne. Uh, Rodas is kind of a surprise. Rodas Clay was one of the bigger names, right? You know, as far as name identity, like. But the most shocking, Mark Harris. <laughs> of course, the referee Mark Harris. Harris. Come on, it's Mark Harris, Harris bro. Yeah. No, no, I'm playing. He's a guy uh, too. He lost his paycheck. It sucks. Uh, you know, that's the thing. Everybody says, "Ah, uh, you got fired." This, that, and that. These guys are losing paychecks, man. It's like when they Mark got, Henry made that comment. Kurt Hawkins jumped all over him. Like, yeah. yo, what a dumb fucking thing to you say. Know, uh, they got families to feed. They got. They, yeah. they, you know, well, for those you don't know, I thought you'd explain it. Henry made a comment, no. basically like, "Yeah, I'm still here for 18 years." The day everybody got released. I mean, it also happened to be his birthday, and I think he was more along the lines of saying, "Hey, I'm 18 years right, in the business. It's my right. birthday, and I'm still here." But it was bad timing because but, everybody just got fired, and Hawkins was like, "Yo, what? You're an idiot, Mark." I think is what but, he said. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But, well, and then Henry replied, well, "You know where to find me." I'd say beat, Mark probably beat fired. his uh, fucking uh, ass. But, I would, uh, and Kurt kind of shut it off at that. Point. I would. <laughs> yeah, would, would you? Would you like have I Marcus would, Henry come no, on? No, no. I don't think so. No, thank you. Uh, Lance Winter, thoughts on the last UFC in Vancouver? It, it was, sucked. It this past Saturday night, it, it did suck. Roy McDonald beat Tyron Woodley, decent. We watched um, that. Demetrius Every fight Ch- went five rounds. Demetrius Johnson uh, rounds. won a decision to retain his title, and uh, Andre Arlovski got a gift yes. decision over Brandon Schaub. Yes. Schaub really won that fight. I lost money on it to this fucking guy. Um, we were going to do bets on Slam Reversary too, but before yeah. we forgot. We're going to do uh, payback bets next I've week. I've literally lost like, every show we've done in like the last three four or five. Three. I'm three for three. I think it's like four or five shows now. I think so. I'm going to get you on payback. Two pay per views, too. UFC, and there was another. There's four shows. I'm going to get you a payback too. I'm we're doing predictions. I'm taking it back. Next week. All right. I'm taking it back. All right. What do we got I'm next? I'm not doing ROH predictions. Paul Velasquez. Who's next? Uh, no, that's you. Oh. Am I the only one who thinks that the Stardust gimmick could actually work for Cody Rhodes? He's always been a great worker, but never connected with the crowd. He was also, or he was into his gimmick last night and even got some Stardust chance going. Eventually, I see Rhodes turning heel, 
Gold Dust versus Star Dust at SummerSlam. I think so. We just talked about I that. I think you uh, just said well, it right there. Yeah, man. yeah. yeah. Um, I fucked up here. What do we got? We got uh, Jason Hansen. When Sando came up from NXT, reports were saying that Triple H pretty much took him under his wing, and he was a big supporter of his primarily. Really? Is that true? Can we break? He right was the last to be trained. Is that I don't true? Remember Triple H? Does it make sense? Because he kind of had Triple H's Hunter Hearst Helmsley gimmick. This the, the snob, the, bit, ben, yeah. you know, the whole yeah. mic, you know, yeah. the whole thing. I don't remember hearing that. I don't either, but it I'll makes sense. I'll take your word on it. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. He was, uh, he was last trained by the legendary Killer Kowalski. Triple H was also trained by Killer Kowalski. Oh, Sandow was trained by Kowalski? Yeah, I, I didn't so. know that either. Or learning stuff. All right. From Jason Hansen. I don't see Sandow being the type of guy to piss somebody you off. I, I agree. What I, is the deal I, with Sandow? I've columns and a million Facebook comments, and my comments always, who did Damien Sandow Sandow piss off? off. My God, why are they doing this? put it up on Facebook. Why are they doing this to him? The guy just had a run with the the briefcase, Main the Bank, which was coming up on for a year. Uh, He was getting over like Rover. He took a shit gimmick and really made it work. Right. Really got a lot of mileage out of a fucking shit gimmick. Right. And now they're burying the the hell out of him. Like, what did he do? I don't know. I don't know. What do we got next? Jordan Paul Vail is what we got next. The champ. We got, we'll call you the champ. Jordan Paul the champ of Vail says, Do you think there will be a new 3MB or will he Slater go back to being on his own? You brought it up earlier with I don't the think Slater la- I don't think Slater lasts that long. I think there's going to be more releases in the upcoming weeks here. I do too. what happens. Christopher Brown. I was reading a Bleacher Report. <laughs> It's a joke of a website, just so you know. Uh, on the current it's Wikipedia WWE for lines, entertainment. In one article, it suggested that WWE needs a face equivalent to the authority, but with Cena going after the belt. Uh, Brian, Brian Inger and, and pray to God. God they're patient. Reigns hopefully not being rushed. I'm afraid that they Who may give... Who is the give, top remaining baby face? I'm they afraid can, that they may give Roman Reigns... I'm afraid I may have some bad news. They may give Roman Reigns title at Money in the Bank, and if they do, it's way too early. I'm going either Cena, and it's crazy, and I don't want to say it. Cesaro. Cesaro. The the man said it's a spoiler. I trust Paul Heyman. I know. Ryan Shawtalk. And I think that's the idea, so it's not going to happen, but it's a fucking brilliant little thing that you throw in there for the real hardcore. We're running overtime for you tonight. You're really only going to get the hardcore fans with that shit, though, because the casual fan's not going to pick up on Oh, he said spoiler. I know. Ryan Shawtalk says, do you see TNA using some of the former ROH and WWE guys at their upcoming New York City tapings? I think they should will have the Hardy Boys versus the Wolves if Spike TV executives show up and see how... Hot the crowd would be just for that match. Things would look real good for the company. WWE guys, most of them have a 90-day no-compete clauses, so they wouldn't be able to appear on an Impact taping, DVDs, nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, not by then. Um, so it would uh, it would be too soon for any of the release. But he didn't say guys. WWE guys. He said Hardy Boys versus the Wolves. Uh, Hardys versus the Wolves. Everybody's talking about the Wolves against the Hardys. I would love to see. It'd be a great match. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Larry Smith will TNA. Well, they TNA. just did the Hardys and the Briscoes. That was cool. Uh, Larry Smith will TNA. That was cool. Yeah. It's uh, like a dream match. Like, oh shit, imagine if the Hardys were still around and the Briscoes would, you know. Well, TNA, listen to the fans. If they vote for the six-sided ring and gets the most votes. I mean, listen. Number Isn't one. That already... Number one, it's going to get the most votes. There's no doubt about it. Everybody, any TNA fan, wants the six-sided ring back. I say no. four-sided ring. Uh, I'm going to say that the six-sided ring wins the poll. Oh, no. It clearly should, and it will be back. No, I agree. I say the six-sided win, wins the poll and probably will be back, but if it was up to you, which do you think should be? Um, you know, I, I think it should be the four-sided ring. I think TNA six-sided ring, it made them different from other companies. It made them innovative. But did it help? And nobody else. No, it didn't help. It didn't do anything. But it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it, it does didn't, st- separate it, them from the pack. It separates them. It didn't help, but Visually. it didn't do them any less favors. No, you're uh, right. By, by it doesn't help or hurt. But yeah, you might as well be different if you can. I, uh, I, I agree in that sense, but I just think you don't fuck with the tradition of wrestling. Six-sided ring returns. Full time DNA. John Morgan says they completely blindsided us with Ambrose and Reigns suddenly no longer being a team. Was this the best way for them to end the Shield? No. I don't like that the Shield split in the I don't either. Place. I don't think Reigns is ready. I think it's going to be a big mistake in the long run, but we'll see what they do. The with Shield it. was one of the most popular things on Raw week after week. You would, uh, And they the missed the opportunity out, to uh, immediately uh, boost a new guy because guess what? You put Sami Zayn with Reigns and Ambrose and debut him as the new third member of the Shield. Sami Zayn's over within six months. And I mean over, over. 
Faux leave. Or, yeah. In the shield. I forgot about that rant last Faux week. leave. This guy ranted. For those in who didn't shield. tune in last week. Faux leave. 20 minute rant. And he was. All you gotta do is believe. And he was dead serious. All you gotta do is believe. He really believed. In the shield. He really believed that Bo Dallas should be in the shield. Believe. 20 minute rant. He really believes it. Vince and New Jam, what do you guys think about the shield? Believe. What do we think about the shield? Officially now? splitting with Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. I already talked about this, man. I don't like yeah. the shield split. No, you know? no, no. I don't like it. Jorge Romero. Uh, oh. just announced his second wins bank match. We got that. With WWE losing tons of money and cutbacks, will this be a issue and issue for WWE Network long-term plans? Uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago. Uh, when the number came out, the 667, if they don't meet the requirements that they need to make the break even. Either raise uh, the price. They're either going to raise something. the price. It's probably going to be a little bit of both. They're going to raise the price of a subscription to offset it a little bit as much as they can without making the price too high that they turn their, their customer base up. Which I don't think, I think they could go up $15 a month and it would, the same people would get it that's getting it. Um, Keep in mind the uh, six, six month uh, subscription. Those are up are very up soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. the other thing is uh, they they're would good. they would lower the the amount of money they're putting into it. Like they do less original programming, less because right. of more production costs, more right. money uh, rolling the tape over it to uh, make it digital. You know. Christopher Brown, what are the odds that one of the released eleven WWE talents formerly owned the Et Cranky Vince account uh, before it was finally deleted? I don't know a whole lot about this. You know, I think... Uh, What's the quick story on Cranky Vince Twitter? Uh, listen, Cranky Somebody Vince Somebody supposedly that worked for the company... Somebody was, that works for the company okay. says Vince is in a pissed off mood this day or he's in a good mood this day and, you know... He and they revealed, thought it was JBL, right? They thought it was JBL and it very well could be JBL. JBL denies this, but there was uh, a couple of months ago... I know the story. JBL yeah. sent out a tweet and... Well, no, he sent it out accidentally on the Cranky Twitter account there first. Were, there were two tweets. And then deleted it and quickly put it on his account. J JBL put it on his account, and then, yes, it wound up... Oh, in the, the other way around. Account. He went to post his tweet as JBL, and yes. I guess he was still logged into Cranky Twitter. Yes. Didn't realize it, posted a very obvious JBL tweet. Yes. Realized what he did, quickly deleted it, posted it under his real account. What he should have done was just, whatever it was, don't post it. Don't Because do it. once you right. post it under the second, everybody's going to be like, wait a minute... Everybody picked up JBL. Some people sit on Twitter all day. J JBL and the Cranky Vince tweet. <coughs> word, word for word. Word for word. Same exact within thing. Within minutes apart. And then within minutes, the Cranky Vince tweet was deleted. And it was and reposted it was still on, JBL. on JBL. If it was the other way around, uh, you could say, oh, somebody copied JBL's tweet I, and I, they're trying to set him up. I think. Uh, it went on Cranky Vince first, then JBL. I think JBL got caught red handed. I believe he so, too. He denies it, but. And he seems like the kind of guy that would do that. Without knowing Absolutely. It. I could picture it. Absolutely. That. I, I think it was JBL, but... Jay Mullins says, Reigns cut a promo on SmackDown last week, and it was pretty damn good. I'm calling for Bray Wyatt to win the title and Triple H to screw Roman Reigns at Money in the Bank to set up their match eventually down the road at SummerSlam. By the way, I've also heard Roman Reigns on the mic enough. If you watch SmackDown for the last three months, you'd know, he says, uh, to say he can hold his own in the long run. He's got the look, some cool moves. He'll be a huge star post the Triple H feud. We'll but my time. question is totally different. Any news on Junior Dos Santos and his broken hand? Oh, um, Jesus. He goes from WWE. Yeah, really. Wham, right? Right? Uh, there really is no update on Junior Dos Santos. He should be back within a couple months. Broken hands take good eight months. Andy Siegel, could you see a Freaking scenario where two wrestlers are on the top of the ladder grabbing one of the belts and they each we come down with a belt? We did yeah. that. I could I could see that, but I don't think it'll happen. It would be a cool idea because then you'd have the you know the unification issue again. Got a UFC question for you to end it. Vincent Nugent with Chael Sonnen recently failing his drug test and being retired and retiring from mixed martial arts. Uh, do you guys think he might venture off to the professional wrestling industry? What are your thoughts on that? If he can't pass the drug test in UFC, he's going to have a problem in WWE. Well, no, he, he could he could do something in a speaking role, like a manager or That's a true. GM or an announcer or an interviewer backstage. Uh, no, he's not going to WWE. He's got way too many opportunities. 
in MMA and in Fox. Fox loves them. You're right. Fox Sports, right. their sports division, especially with their launching the Fox Sports does and Fox Sports Two. MMA Daily or something. He like hosts that. UFC tonight That's every nice. uh, week, and uh, he does a lot of the uh, yeah a lot of the Fox stuff. So, I mean, he's got jobs for days if he wants it. He's got appearances, opportunities, sponsorships for days. He won't be struggling to make a paycheck. Right. Matty Boone. Ryan C. Tuesday night. We'll call it. All right. Believe. Believe. We, we, I believe we need some feedback is what I believe. We do need some feedback. Submit feedback at Facebook.com slash MattBoonWZR or yes. Facebook.com slash RyanClarkWZR. We both put feedback posts up right after we go off the air here tonight. So go over there, Facebook.com slash MattBoonWZR or Facebook.com slash RyanClarkWZR. We want your feedback. What can we do better? What do you want to see more of? How's it go? Hey, we want your feedback. You tell us what you like, we'll do more of it. You tell us what you don't like, we'll do less of it. This is how we custom fit the show for you, some bitches. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark, WZR. Facebook.com slash Matt Boom, WZR. Let us know what you want. With that being said, yes. Day night. WWE payback predictions. Payback. Money in the bank. Money in the bank predictions. Money in the bank predictions. Raw phone Tuesday calls. Raw phone calls. Raw live Raw. phone calls. Live chat room as always. In the rapid fire. WWE money in the bank predictions for Matt Boone. That's me. This is Ryan. That's him. See you next Tuesday night, 8 10 Eastern time on WZRline.com.